welcome from Community Stadium in Muscatine. Week 8 of the high school football season. Senior night as the Muskies welcome Davenport north to town. Hello, everyone. As always, I'm Robin Glembine alongside Chris Anderson. And, Chris, I like to sometimes think of a season like a like a novel, right? You got nine chapters. If you're If it's a good read, perhaps a tenth. An 11th chapter comes along, and, and we cracked the book on this season eight weeks ago with some great expectations. We, we had a great protagonist in Ty Kozad. We had a great supporting cast, a lot of seniors around him. Feel good and uh, some high hopes coming on into the season. And in the first chapter, our protagonist took a bit of a hit. And, and not only our main protagonist, you had one of his primary supporting cast there. Yes, Robin took a hit also. So we, we were down, <laughs> and, and then you know we, we that was that, that was actually Lincoln Brookhart, folks. He's now Robin. <laughs> He's Robin, and, and, and the book continued, and there were some upswings and some downswings, and, and like any good book would have, we we still had those hopes, and and things were starting to to look better. The protagonist was back, and. And all of a sudden, the last two chapters, this book kind of turned into a novel by Stephen King, right? It, it turned into a bit of a horror story. Two tough, one-sided losses. And now we come into chapter eight, and it's really looking like a Stephen King novel because our protagonist took a, another huge hit and perhaps fitting that we're playing on Friday the 13th tonight. Uh, and we got to turn this horror story around. Tell me a little bit about Ty Kozad, and, and uh, he's not going to go tonight. He, he's not. There was, um, you know, I talked with the family. There's He had an undisclosed injury. Um, you know, it doesn't sound like it's anything that's going to be long-term, affect his career or anything like that, but it's kind of put him in this day-to-day -day status. Um, he was able to be here for senior night, uh, have his name called, get recognized, all that stuff, but uh, he won't be in uniform tonight, and uh, we don't know what next week looks like. Um, and so, you know, there's there's just a toughness to that, right? You know, we've had several seniors go down, you know, uh, Brookhart, and a couple others that have kind of lost their whole senior season, right? And to your point, this was a team that was kind of put together to push now, right? And so now you're going to turn to the Cooper Yows and the True Sales and, and turn to them and say, look, you're the guy. We're here. We're on the cusp. You got to pull this across. You got to pull us across the end zone here. Well, this can go one of two ways is how I see it. It's, it's either you, you circle the wagons, your, you know, your top offensive weapon, one of the best running backs in the state is out. Do you rally around him? Do you do what you can to get this team to the playoffs and get him a chance to play another game with the Muskies? Or, or do you just fold your tents up and say, woe is me? And that's what we're going to find out here in, in a few minutes here. But uh, at first, we're going to take time out and uh, listen to the playing of our national anthem.
It's always the Musky Marching Band getting things started off on the right note. Another fine job by them. And uh, I tell you what, the weather has been amazing this season, Chris. But tonight, a different story. Tonight is not that night. Yeah, it's it's not. But this could actually be a good thing as this will kind of uh, ground passing attacks and the Muskies don't have a passing attack, so they're used to keeping it on the ground. North has always been kind of a passing school since since Adam Height kind of took the reins, and now they're a little more balanced this year. But still, if you're able to make them one-dimensional and take their passing game away from them, make them go to the ground, uh, that that's a big advantage for the Muskies. It, it is, and, you know, we've talked about this at several points with several opponents and with the Muskies themselves. When you're one-dimensional, it cuts out all the complexity of what your defense has to be ready for. And, you know, when you can throw nine, ten guys in the box and have mm-hmm. them within five feet of the ball, it makes it a lot more difficult. And that's what we're looking at. I, I do anticipate they're, they're still going to try to throw the ball a bit. If you look at the numbers this season, Muskie's 10 out of 22 passing, 117 yards. That, by the way, is 326 out of 329 teams. And you're talking about the passing yardage, and that's all classes in the state of Iowa. Davenport North, they've attempted 113 or 195 passes, have completed 113 for 1,237 yards this year through the air. Again, compared to 117 for the Muskies, there is your huge difference. So they like to throw the ball. They rank 19th in the entire state out of, again, those 329 teams when you're talking about pass attempts. So that will be interesting to see how effective they can be tonight with this rain falling and if that will uh, help the Muskies out, maybe maybe get an interception or two. Their quarterback has thrown seven picks on the season, Kaz Rabarczyk. Uh, against six touchdowns. Now, when we're talking about rushing the ball. Now, North does have 1,400 yards rushing compared to just over 1,900 for the Muskies on the year. North runs a lot more plays. That's going to come from incomplete passes. You're going to get longer, more plays in your game. So they've run 486 plays this year, only 337 for the Muskies. Total yards, 2,650 for North, just over 2,050 for Muscatine. That's kind of the, the tail of the tape. This Davenport North team comes in with a 2-5 and five record. Interesting, however, they're 2-5, and five, but five of their seven games, they've had the lead in the second quarter. So first halves have been decent for North. It's after halftime, things kind of fall apart for them. Muskies are on the field, and the, the crowd that is braving the weather gives a good... Uh, Applause, a good welcome to their uh, heroes as they try to get the victory tonight on senior night. If you do get the win, you keep your playoff hopes alive. It, it really it comes down to the Muskies sitting 24th this week. Again, we always talk you got to be in that top 16. And uh, some good news last night, the team right above them, number 23, Des Moines Roosevelt lost. So in reality, the Muskies kind of in 23rd now. You just got to pass seven teams. And tonight's an interesting night. Like last week we talked about this, and I was able to predict all 18 games correctly. It was just that kind of a week where you knew who was going to win. Uh, this week, no. There is a lot of – the fact, 22 teams ahead of Muscatine, 22 of the 23 teams play each other. So that gives you kind of the teams on the bottom are playing each other, the teams on top are playing each other. So there's a lot of interesting games out there tonight. So for those of you at home that aren't necessarily uh, football calculus folks, basically what this translates into is a hot plate of spaghetti where everybody's intertangled, and basically you win, you get out of the spaghetti. Why are you always making me hungry? Uh, is, is that not a good analogy, though? This I is mean, a great night for I mean, spaghetti, too. You know, it's you can do all the math you want. You can do all of the prognostication. Basically, it comes down to you got to take care of business. I mean, if for, you go out there and yeah. win the games, you're going to end up where you need to end up. For example, Davenport West plays Hempstead tonight. They're ranked 16th and 17th. 
So you got games like that. Number one plays number two, by the way. That we'll check on that score too. The two undefeated teams, Dowling and actually, uh, yeah, Dowling and Southeast Polk are meeting up tonight. So it is a good week with a lot of great games, and we'll know a lot more, a lot, lot more after tonight's over. But basically, the only one that matters is, is right here, finding a way to win without tie and keep your hopes alive. And we are ready for kickoff. The Muskies will start off on offense tonight, going right to left on your screen. North, this will be returnable. And, and I'm going to say it right now. I'm predicting maybe not this one, but I'm predicting a special teams touchdown tonight, Chris. Really? I, I really am. North does not have the team to put the ball in the end zone. Uh, through uh, the kicking game, so you're gonna get some returns, and we'll see what happens. That's not really that's how not to do a, it. That's not a return. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Now, folks, again, if you don't follow us a lot, uh, last year and and actually once or twice this year, Roland has called 70 plus yard touchdown runs. Okay, um, he's called fake punts. He's called. Is there anything else unusual that you've called? Unusual. You I don't believe on, so. Uh, but on the field, So no. I'll tell you this. If, if he says there's going to be a special teams touchdown, I might put some money on it. I think I just feel good about it. I don't know if that was making me feel better, though, that start. But here we go. Starting things off from the 26-yard line out of the wishbone formation. It's Cooper Yao getting the first carry tonight, and he picks up uh, about three yards up to the 30. And, folks, I do want to apologize if you notice we have some slightly unusual camera angles tonight. Because of the weather, we've actually moved the guys inside and allowed them to come in out of the rain. Um, so <laughs> we have uh, kind of commandeered the extra press box up here. So uh, give us a little bit here as we get, a, a, get let's dialed be, in. Let's be clear. We're doing that more to save our equipment than our camera people. Yeah, because, and for those of you also <laughs> that don't know, I'm Chris Anderson. He's Roland Glenbine. But our main camera operator and, you know, producer of the Musketeen Today show is also another gentleman named Chris Anderson. Yes, and that is and a carry of a couple yards there. Brookhart on the carry. Brings up a third down and about five right now. And here you go, first big play of the game. Now, we do also have another special guest up here with us. Uh, we're going to call him Injured Stolfus. <laughs> I tried to be funny, and I can't even pull that wow. off. But we were talking before the game. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a really, really late game uh, that, because of rain and lightning, that didn't. We got started, got back playing about what was it, eleven o'clock, I think, and but that was back when we didn't have the turf. So w this is probably going to be one of the first games that we've had a lot of water on this turf that I can think of. So it'll be interesting to see how the guys handle it. Well, Cooper Yao not able to pick up a whole lot there on third down, so three and out go with the Muskies, unless they do a fake here. And the ball is booted away high into the rain. That's going to be troublesome, and they'll just let it bounce right at the 40. And North will get their first crack at it. Pretty good field position at the 42-yard line. Out come the Wildcats. Uh, again, they're, they lost their top running back early in the season. In Have they found him? Uh, they found him, but unfortunately they found him with a torn ACL. So oh. Mr. Sheedy is out for the year. But uh, they got a couple running backs who have done really nice in, in, in replacing him. And so th they're a very balanced attack. And it will be Bogan getting the first crack at it here in the backfield. Barcheck takes it, gives it to the receiver on a sweep play, and, oh, he picks up a nice first down right out of the gate. The Wildcats move the ball. It's Cuddle Burridge on the carry. So first and ten into Muscatine territory. And this time uh, the give is to Bogan, and he's making some nice moves. Moving the chain again, and, and this is a troublesome start right now, and, and this has been a, a tough spot for this Muskie defense. They have given up 32 points per game over the last five games. So the defense really needs to bow up a bit here, and here's a chance to do it. And there's a nice stop on the give to Mason Bogan as he is caught in the backfield, a loss of one on the play. 
So Mason Bogan, the main carrier uh, for the Cats, 126 touches on the season, 749 yards. Also has 47 yards receiving. He caught a touchdown pass last Thursday night against City High. Four receivers set, and the North fakes the pass. They're going to keep it on the ground. A long way to go there. And uh, maybe two, three yards on the carry is Israel Harper. That is a, that's a tough play there. Harper ran about 53 yards, but only three of it in the right direction. So third down and long, and we'll see if North puts the ball in the air for the first time tonight. Not a whole lot in the kicking game, at least not from this distance. It would be about a 46-yarder in these conditions. This could be four-down territory for the Wildcats right now. They go stack receivers tight to the left, and there's the ball on the ground, and Bogan has to fall on it. So there's the weather coming into play early, and it seems like it's raining even harder right now. And I can tell you for sure it's raining harder right now. It is coming down. I'm surprised you can't hear it in our mics. And fourth down, what do you do here? Taking their time. Play clock still a lot on that, 25 seconds. So North is going to line up to go for it. This might be a quarterback draw kind of situation. If not, you have a great chance to pick this one off. And the quarterback will keep it. Rabarczyk runs. And if you're going to do that, why not just punt? So Muscatine gets the ball back. Not sure why you're running that play on fourth and 17 unless you don't want to risk a bad punt in these conditions right bad now. Bad snap. Right? It's, you know, it's, it's actually really maybe not all that bad of an idea because it is – torrential out there folks is, thank goodness for the turf right now because wow we'd be having mud bowl 2023 thank otherwise box. thank goodness for the press box. muscatine gets the ball back and uh, they have a chance to move it right now we'll see if they can strike first tonight receiver set towards the top of your screen wishbone look Here's the turn, the give, and not a whole lot there. This is quickly turning into a, a field position kind of game as Cooper Yao on the carry. He gets up uh, two, we'll call it a short three yards, maybe long two yards on that carry. Second down upcoming for Muscatine. This Wildcat team again, two and five on the season. Uh, they have wins over Marshalltown and Davenport Central and here's the give to Yao. Yao tries to find a hole. Really nothing there. Another great job by this Wildcat defense led by defensive coordinator Nathan Fisher. Third down and about six yards upcoming for the Muskies. Gage Curtis under center. Will turn, a give to Yao. Yao comes near side, uh, picks up a few, but not enough. And a fourth down. And about two. Coach Hawkins decides to stay conservative and brings out the punting unit. Well, again, the snap all so important in these conditions. Not bad. Othmer gets the foot to the ball, and it's a high one. There's going to be a flag interference. Well, not a smart play there by the Muskies special teams. They ran right into the receiver, who wasn't really going for the ball anyway. And that's going to give some free yardage back to the Wildcats as they get their second crack at it midway through this first quarter. You know, we usually like to do some shout-outs to folks in the audience if we can. Uh, Angel Graciano is watching us all the way from Salt Lake City. 
And we also have another f- person who, uh, you know, doesn't normally watch the games live with us. Mr. Kosa just said, go Muskies. There we go. Ty, if you're listening, hope you get feeling better, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, all the best to that young man. Our thoughts are with him tonight. I know that's not where he wants to be on senior night. When again, you know, I mean, obviously it's not just Ty that's had some rough times from that, but his is the most recent. So, so the ball marked at the 42-yard line. Rain still coming down, not as hard as it was uh, a few moments ago. Where Barczyk, out of the pistol, gives it off to their other running back, Derek Pena. And Pena has been a nice find for them this year. Just a sophomore. Has seen a lot of action since Sheedy went down with the injury. And uh, has put up some nice numbers. About 255 rushing yards on 42 carries. A couple touchdowns coming in. And here's Pena right up the middle. The seas parted. A late flag comes down. We'll see what that could be. It wasn't thrown until the uh, tackle was made. It is a first down right now pending the flag. What's great about conditions like this, again, other than being inside, is it cuts down on the officials really having long conversations. This is true. (laughs) Very true. You know, uh, again, folks, if you don't normally watch the Muskies, last week uh, the Zebras were herding about every, what, minute and a half? There were a lot of flags, and there were a lot of long discussions about Oh, my. I didn't think I was going to make it home before the turn of the century. So this is on Muscatine, and they'll explain it to Coach Hawkins. And they'll mark Ooh. more yardage off and north again inside Muscatine territory. I think we may have to get out a map to see who is the Muskie fan watching from the farthest because we have Sue Lesline from Florida. Might have to, Sue, if you're not doing anything, pull up another window and see if you're closer to Muscatine or if uh, Salt Lake City is. Well, it depends where in Florida, I think. I know. that's. I don't know where she's from. That's why I asked her oh. to do it. Okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> delegating like you usually do. Yeah, that's all that is. Yes. That's right, exactly. Three receivers set again with Barczyk. Hands off Pena. Pena made the first guy miss and does get about five yards on the carry. Pena coming up a, a bit of a limp. And they'll keep him in the game for now, however. Second down, four receiver set this time. Raparchek out of the pistol, gives to Pena. Pena has the first down and more. Pena inside the 10, down to the five, still on his feet. Pena won't give up. Down to the goal line, and the ball's fumbled. And there go the Muskies the other way. There was no whistle. I I don't even... Coach Hyde over there talking to the officials. Here. The whistle never blown. That should be musky ball. Here we go. We'll take another look at it. We're checking He's out driving, the replay driving, right now. Driving, driving, Pena. Oh, and it cut out with four. Oh, man, that's I, unfortunate. But we'll have another one. Let me, let <laughs> okay. me look and see, maybe. You work on that, but that is a really big turn of events and a big break for the Muskies. Pena was fighting for the end zone. Lost that ball just before he got there. Well, it's better to be lucky than good, do a good job of tackling, I guess, and force that ball out. And, and the weather comes into play. Turnover is going to be a story tonight. And, again, nowhere to run. And, you know, credit Coach Fisher right now on that Davenport North side. They know the Muskies don't throw the ball in these conditions. They're just stacking that box and saying, our big guys are going to beat your big guys. And so far they have. Darnell Thompson in the game now for the Muskies. You got to run some misdirection or something right now because nothing else is working. 
Here's the quick give up the middle, and that was not a bad gain. That will set up a third and makeable. I believe that was Aiden Lopez on the carry. So the ball marked at the 25-yard line. You got to get to the 29. Again, Thompson into the game. Play clock at 20. Game clock down to four minutes left in this first quarter. Looking for that free five. Nobody moves on north side. And here's the give. Close to it. I think he got the first down. First first down of the game for Muscatine. Didn't come easy. So first and 10 from the 30 as they wind the clock. Again, we'll uh, start to look at some scores for you here in a little bit and try to keep up with, oh, there's some movement up front, and I believe that's going against North. North did that a lot. I, I saw their game last Thursday night against City High. There was a lot of movement up front. They are a very impatient group. Well, you know, one of the wrinkles that Coach Hawkins has put in this year is some of those shifts and some of the more complex movements pre-snap. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll pay off tonight. They did that a lot last year as well. It is something that definitely catches some defenses jumping, some aggressive defenses. And there's Cooper Yao on first and five. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. Maybe a yard. So call it second and four upcoming now for the Muskies. So should we play 50 states? We've got Utah and Florida covered. Anybody from Indiana in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to call out states? Oh. I am, just randomly. Feel free to help a guy out if you're Dive watching on Facebook. Dive play up the middle. Uh, not a whole lot there. If you're watching and on Facebook, uh, YouTube. Tell us where you're from. A third down <laughs> upcoming. Uh -oh. uh, we got someone dressed up as the Halloween character down there <laughs> walking by. Which <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Jason is in attendance. <laughs> Moving with a purpose too. It's a little creepy. Oh, this is this is this is great. Third down, Friday the thirteenth. Gotta love it. Give to Yao. Yao not running very hard, trying to find a hole, and he comes up a little short. Now, do you go for it on fourth down? I think you do. I. I and out comes the punting unit. It's fourth and one. You got to win this game. You got to, you got to be aggressive. In my opinion, you got to be aggressive. You're, you're playing without, you know, your your main weapon. You got to tell your guys, hey, we're going for this tonight. But not yet. Fourth and one. And uh, Oh, there's going to keep there it. it is. He's got the first I, down. There you go. That's what we needed right there. Wow, they did that earlier in the year, and it worked like a charm. And boom, there it goes again. Y I, you just, just I knew didn't, you I, didn't want to kick the ball away there, right? Know, well, and I was just about to say, remember, you've got Jackson Othmer back there, yep. right? So you like, should have said it. You've got, I was just getting ready to, and then the ball snapped. And, but <laughs> he's, <laughs> you know... He plays in the secondary. He's fast. Yeah. He can kick. He can move, then kick if he needs to, if he doesn't see it. You know, there's a reason he's one of the best kickers in the state. And that's a – oh, my goodness, that was so close. Now, here's an interesting thing, folks. I don't know how many of you have an 11-year-old boy, but I do. And uh, sometimes I think he gets confused on his states because there's this Iron Avenger 8 watching on YouTube who says he's from me, which is Maine, and I know he's literally, like, just down the street. Good carry by Brookhart crossing – the 40. Yeah. <laughs> I, mm. We got family of the Frankie boys tuning in from South Dakota. 
and Jose Aranda from Wisconsin. We're putting a dent in these 50 states. There we go. Folks, if you've got friends somewhere, send them the link real quick. Let's get all 50 tonight. Wishbone formation. Big second down play. There's the pitch. Brookhart bobbled it a bit. Regained control. Could never find the corner. And just like at home, he doesn't listen and ask me what I said. Kale Parrott on the, excuse me, Kale Perrett on the tackle. Now, you know, this is a time where with the field conditions, you would expect to maybe see them trying to go more up the middle, a little more off tackle, and they've kind of been going away from that, but that's historically what they've done. Here's the give. Nice play right there. A little trap inside. Lopez picking up eight or nine yards. There you, you fake the toss to Yao. Come back up the middle, and that was a nice play. So fourth down. Now you're kind of committed to go forward, I believe. And uh, the clock runs out in the first quarter at a, perhaps the perfect time as they can design something. Don't have to burn a timeout. With this big fourth down play upcoming, we're going to take a quick break. Scoreless first quarter here in Muscatine. Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut. Back here starting the second quarter and a huge fourth down play to do it. Muskies on the field going for it. Yao in motion. Here's the get back to Lopez, and he stopped short of the first down, so they go back to that same play that worked a moment ago, and this time the Wildcats read it and stopped it, and the Cats get the ball back. Rain continues to fall here. In Muscatine, glad you could join us. Uh, hopefully you're nice and dry and Cuddled up on the couch with a bowl of popcorn. Rabarchek out of the gun. Gives off. Bogan bobbled it. Now Bogan in trouble and brought down by Sawyer Zek after a loss of about two on the play. Barchek gives off Bogan. Bogan looking the right side this time. Beats one tackler, still on his feet. Has the first down, down the sidelines and pushed out of bounds. But a big gain by Mason Bogan will get north into Muskie territory. Well, north yet to throw the ball as both teams like we thought might be the case, keeping it on the ground in these conditions tonight. Pleasant Valley, the early 3-0 lead against Iowa City West. Again, it's a Bogan up the middle, close to a first down. Again, we it's better for Muscatine if Pleasant Valley wins tonight, so they have that 3-0 lead over the Trojans. Again, the option play, Rabarczyk keeps it close to the first down. We'll see where they mark that ball. No signal yet from the officials. And uh, they're going to keep it third down.
Here's the give, and Pena this time will pick up the first down yardage close to the 30-yard line. Barczyk out of the pistol has three receivers towards the bottom of your screen. The give is to Pena. Pena stopped in the backfield. A loss on the play. Frankie on the tackle. Read that beautifully. And second down and long now for the Wildcats. Barcheck out of the pistol will give to Bogan. Bogan runs into the wall and brought down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on the play. Nico Arceo on the tackle. And third down and long upcoming for the Cats. Again, probably a four down situation unless you can get a sack here. And they might punt it. They'll go four receivers to each direction. Barcheck out of the pistol. Turns, looks to throw, gets through the sack, puts it in the air, has his man wide open. And that ball will be marked down around the 12-yard line. First down, Wildcats. Had a chance there at the sack. Rabarczyk broke the tackle, found a man standing all by himself, and now first and 10 from the 12. Quick pitch out to Bogan. Bogan looking for the corner, may have it. Bogan into the end zone. No flags on the play. Touchdown, Wildcats. Muscatine's going to have to find some way to keep that run inside. Yeah, the backbreaker, really, the pass play on third and 12. Extra point opportunity here. This has been an adventure. Anytime the kicking game is on the field for the Wildcats this year, extra point is up and hits the cross, or the upright, excuse me, and no good. So the adventures continue there. And North strikes first, however, up 6 0, 9 0 9 to go, second quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals. You're building the future. We're here to help. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected, and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs. Be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest. Back here in Muscatine, Davenport North gets on the board first. 12-yard touchdown run by Mason Bogan. And now the Muskies will have a second crack at returning a kick tonight. First one, they kind of just fell on it with nobody around. Wildcats have tried about five different guys kicking off this year. This one's short. Thompson has it at the 20. Thompson to the 30, looks for a hole. Thompson out of bounds across the 40-yard line. So the Cats about 58 yards away from tying things up here in the second quarter. Davenport West, the early lead on the Buke Hempstead tonight, 8 to nothing. They're now playing in the second quarter there. 
And again, you're going to pass. If you win, you're going to pass one of those teams tonight, obviously, and they're playing each other. It, it is better. Well, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just it's more about winning right now. Yeah, it it wing formation first time tonight and back to throw. The ball is out and caught. Cooper Yao has the first down, has more. And there is a where, flag where, down right where Yao caught the ball. Where have we been hiding that play all season? We'll check out the flag here. We got a penalty on the Muskies. So wipe out the nice run after the catch. Crowd not appreciative of it. Oh. A little offensive pass interference, the call. As they're saying, there was a, a bit of a pick play on it, and that, uh, boy, that hurts. That's tough. That ball, we're talking about 35 yards, the difference between where Yao went out of bounds and where they're marking it after the penalty. But I'll still give Coach Hawkins credit for breaking that thing out because that's a wrinkle that we really haven't seen. Back to throw again, a little screen pass set up, receivers covered, and nice job right here. Curtis keeps it, and, and a nice nice pickup. You know, his receiver was covered, and Curtis decided to put it down, and from, goes from a first and 17 down to a second and seven. So, big 10 yards there, and all of a sudden, back-to-back -back passing plays. And that's I, gonna, if nothing else, loosen up this defense. I, yes, I'm, I'm speechless. And for those that know me, he likes to talk, folks. Thompson will split off. Yao as well in the slot. And again, the throw. Curtis rolls out, slings it out there to Thompson, and that's gonna be a first down. Muskies. All of a sudden, the air raid is on for Muscatine. And that's got the fans making some. I don't know how that wasn't a first down, by the way. They say they marked him a yard short. Uh, 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 that was a gorgeous play by Mr. Curtis. That is a horrible spot, by the way. Horrible spot. That should have been a first down. And now the Muskies facing third and one. Back to throw again. Rolling out as... Had Sawyer Zek. Zek turned to run with it before he caught the ball. And now fourth and one. You got to go you, here. You, you got to – you yes. just got a quarterback sneak it or something. You know, after that roughly 100-yard exchange over a couple of possessions going in North's favor, you're absolutely right. This isn't something that you can just, like, continue to play this field position game. When you've got these opportunities, you're going to have to go after them. Fourth and one. Gage under center. Turns. He's going to throw it on fourth down. This I'm not sure about. And he lets it go, and the ball's knocked out of bounds. Well, that one. Uh, wow. Wow. I'm just get the fry. We like the throwing. The throwing has been surprising them, but on fourth and one at that point. I'm, I'm, I mean, unless. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. So a bad break on the spot after the Yao catch. That was a first down that the officials marked short. And then a couple pass plays. I mean, it was there on the Zek 
He dropped it and then maybe gone to the well one too many times there. North will get the ball back. Now this defense needs to come up with a stop. Here's a sweep play. And nice job right there. Brookhart makes the tackle. Right at the line of scrimmage. It's the way to play on senior night. Four receiver set for North. Seven minutes to go, second quarter. A bar check. Gives off Bogan. Bogan tries the far end. Bogan cuts back and has his feet cut out from under him. Nice job. Thompson on the tackle. Well, again, North is not a second-half team. Uh, if you can just keep this close, tie it up, or at least stay six down going into halftime, I feel okay about it. Back to throw with Barczyk. That's a lateral, look like. He does catch the ball and is brought down. Out of bounds right at the original line of scrimmage. That's Bogan on the catch. So now fourth down, and uh, Coach Height will send out his punting squad. So a good job by the defense there. After a, a bit of a... Gut punch, not getting that first down. They come out and just don't let North carry any momentum from that stop. Get a three and out. And that's one of the things that this team's going to have to do is pick each other up, right? You know, there's been times in the season when the defenses looked strong. There's been times when the offense has carried it. And tonight, it's going to take all of them. Get to the end zone. Get to the end zone. Oh, no. what a beautiful punt right there. That is textbook roll. As Mason Bogan. But that gives you the opportunity to pick up 99 yards. You, you don't see a lot of teams. It does. I remember a time I when remember, we got that. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to run 98 yards with this one, folks. Holy yeah. cow, there he goes. Yeah. Uh, you don't see many teams finishing the thought. Mason Bogan, the running back, doing the punting. And that's what you got here for North, and that that sets them up for those fake opportunities. You got to be aware anytime North lines up to punt it. But here you go, and if we throw here, that would be five attempts in a row, and that would be ballsy out of your own end zone for sure. They do run the ball, and uh, was it fumble? They did lose the ball. North has the ball. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, the North defender came away with it and was holding the ball up. No one seemed to notice it. Now the official's kind of discussing. And there, the one's pointing to the ground, and that would be Muscatine ball, right? I think if, if somebody saw the runner down, then that should supersede. But nope, I guess it doesn't. Norse football right at the goal line. Well, that is a horrendous turn of events right there for the Wildcats. As they have the ball is inches from the end zone after that uh, first down fumble. Parchak gives off Pena. Pena muscles towards the goal line. Touchdown, Davenport North. We'll see if they go one or two. Told you turnovers would be big tonight, and uh, they don't come much bigger than that, fumbling at your own goal line. And the Cats will march out the kicker, Stephen uh, Go, and his kick Ooh. is, uh, yeah, I told you it's been an adventure this year for North on the special teams, on the kicking game at least, and 
That is not pretty. No. No. So with uh, 6.03 left, midway through the second quarter, and North now up 12 to nothing. And how do the Muskies respond, Chris? So we're just going to keep it here. Y you, you, you know, see some hung heads over there, and that's concerning. Well, normally you would say, okay, they're going to come back and they're going to try and hammer it up the middle. They're going to run off tackle. They're going to – I have no idea how they're going to come back at this. I, I like seeing Gage Curtis out moving around, though. It, I will yeah, say that. I, I mean, he's, he looks really good moving with the ball. I, the throws, the couple throws that we've seen on the move, it, it looks like he's got a strong enough arm to pull it off. And he's got the mobility right, to yeah. run pass option. And, and I tell you, if ever my prediction was going to come true for a return, now is the perfect time. Are, are you just going to start predicting it on every special no, team? No, I said this game. I, no, so I know. I'm just I'm saying not throughout sure the game. Are you now gonna... or the next one. Hopefully there's not too okay. many more, though, because right. yeah, can't keep right, giving up so. points. We're running out of opportunities. <sighs> Thompson had a little something on the last one. It's uh, This one's going to go out of bounds. So uh, that will set up the Muskies in decent field position after the penalty. And they got six minutes to do something with it. It, you know, here's the thing. I'm excited to see what comes out of this first drive, or out of this first series. It shall be interesting, my friend. And instead, this is interesting, Muscatine's going to make them re-kick. Instead of taking the ball in the field position, they like their chances to maybe get a return as well. Well, they probably heard your thoughts on what's going to happen here. So, oh, There's no doubt they're over there listening. I like this. I like the decision. You you got playmakers in your return game. You got a team that does not kick the ball deep. Why not take another crack at this? Another short kick. Thompson runs up at the 22. He's got it full speed and now slows down and runs right into a tackler short of the 40-yard line. Mark it at the 39. Air Muskie takes the field here. Let's see what they come out with. Wing formation. And here's Yao. Yao looks for some room on the left end and picking up about three on the carry. Lopez into the game for the Muskies. Second down and seven. As the, the rain has uh, tapered off for sure. Now we got movement up front both ways. And they're going to catch Muscatine. Everybody kind of moved at once. They'll call that on the offense. And again, a second down and long now for the Muskies. We'll see if they go back to the air as Thompson comes into the game. Mark it at the 37. Thompson split off towards the top of your screen. Brookhart in the wing towards the bottom. Yao goes in motion. 
Here's the give, Lopez. Lopez, that didn't fool anybody. Brought down in the backfield. Third down and long. Now the uh, crowd getting a little more vocal in their displeasure on third and 13 as the clock under five minutes to go here, second quarter. Thompson split off, same formation as last time. Some movement early, and there's the flag again, and that will set the Muskies back five more yards. They're going in the wrong direction here, Chris. Third down in 17, and there's not a lot of plays in the playbook for that. Off tackle to Bo Jackson, Tecmo. There's that one. I don't see Bo Jackson in uniform. Just saying, though. I know you challenged me to get a Tecmo reference in every game, and there is yours for tonight. Thompson split off towards the bottom. And back to throw. Curtis, Curtis has the man. And close to that first down. Let's see where they mark it. I think he got it. There's still no official signal. That's a first down, folks. That's a first down. You got to come on. How is that not a first down, folks? Well, it is entirely possible that they've confused you, you got the to white. at least measure, for goodness sakes. Thank you. They could have possibly confused the white and yellow of north for Chiefs white and yellow. I'm not sure why that took so long to bring out the sticks. This is a first down by about a third of the football. I don't know how we just don't have chips in the balls yet. Amazon can tell you to an eighth of an inch how far a ball went in the air. Well, I can tell you from up here. That's yeah, a first I, down. I, I get that. I mean, if you're going to do this, at least have Slinky. Have the Slinky dog come look out at that. like they did in the NFL. And By a third of the football, it's a first down. Son of a gun. And a little bit of a Bronx cheer from the crowd uh, aimed at the officials, and deservedly so. You know, I, I have their backs when they deserve it, and we'll call them out when they deserve it. First down, uh, Muskies. On a very important drive here, just shy of midfield. The give up the middle. Looks like uh, was that Lopez on the carry. It appears. And they're into North Territory. By the way, I want to uh, call it Alec Recker, junior tight end on that reception. That big play. As crazy as it sounds, it absolutely looks like Wrecker, but it is actually Raker. Raker. Thank you. It is. It is. They look like they're going to wreck the ball, but they are Rakers of the ball. There we go. And everybody moves except for the center and quarterback. <laughs> that's that's not how that play's written up, is it? So one step forward, two steps back. It's Paula Abdul once sang. We'll set up a second down in 12 for the Muskies. Speaking of Alex, or Alec Riker, he is actually the younger brother of Nolan Riker, who invented the Riker back position here at MHS. Quarterback keep on the option. It's kind of ran out of real estate there. They ran that short side of the field. And now you got another third down and uh, 10 upcoming for the Muskies. Now a flag thrown, a red flag at that. And I don't think we have challenges in high school football, so. I think we have them. I just don't <laughs> think they're official and do any good. Dead ball. Personal foul on North, so uh, that's big. Wow. <laughs> 
apparently the student section wasn't on you can't do that fast enough so somebody right <laughs> below us decided that they would take it into their own hands and so first down muskies after the uh, mistake mental mistake by the wildcats and here's your opportunity 323 to go you need to come away with points for both the scoreboard and morale you know, I don't think this is, you know, it, they've got to be cold. They've got to be just feeling kind of gross. You don't want to go in with a big hole. No, to nor, nor is the team you can come back from, and, but you need to put points on the board here to get doubt in North's mind and some positive vibes in your own. This uh, drive is huge as the officials talking about something. You can tell the rain, the rain has stopped because the uh, officials are talking again. You got me on the spaghetti mode off they the start. They have amazing spaghetti. Yeah, you, you planted that seed right around kickoff. I planted that seed. What was that, the first home game? Well, you – I don't know what you did. I, I'm just going to let it be. This is probably a wise idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone in the audience thanks you. Thompson split off towards the top. Back to throw. Curtis under some pressure. Jump pass and is caught. Well, again, it's Raker on the reception. Oops. Wrong one there, folks. And it's a, a second down in about three upcoming. Clock at 2.57. Plenty of time here. You got all your timeouts. No need to hurry. You want to score and leave little time as possible, really. Wing formation. Curtis fumbles the ball, picks it up, and is uh, yeah. brought down. He probably should just fell on it at that point. Tried to make something happen. Lost another five yards. And now a tough third down situation again for the Muskies. And we uh, have a timeout called by Coach Height and the Wildcats. They're trying to preserve some time on the clock, presuming they're going to get the ball back right now. That will allow the Muskies to talk this over on a big third down play upcoming. And you got to think they're going to the air because that's what we've been doing here, and it's been effective. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I and it's a situation you don't need to get all 12 yards here. If you can pick up no. eight or nine and set up a fourth and three, you know, that far down, you can go for it and pick it up. So this doesn't need to be a 12, 13-yard play. You know, the, the little crossing routes to uh, Raker have worked here. You still haven't really explored. I think he threw the ball to Thompson once, and that play was called back on penalty. There's another playmaker you can find with the ball right here. The offense just the offensive line just needs to give Gage some time. So back out on the field, 2.32 to go in this second quarter. Muskie's trying to dent the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Here's the turn, play action pass. Curtis rolls out. He's got Yao. Yao's got the first down. Yao out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Beautifully done. And the air raid continues. First down, Muskies. They're going to have more pass. At this rate, they'll have more passing yards tonight than they had all season coming in. Just 117 yards passing all season coming into this game. Folks, as we watch the band uh, pull up and get ready to uh, pull some baseball out onto the field, I'll catch up on how halftime will work here right after this play. Wishbone formation. Curtis gives up Brookhart. Brookhart up the middle. Rumbling forward. Nice gain on first down as that clock continues to tick down to 2.15. Again, you have all three timeouts. Clock is still your friend. 
So, folks, as we go into halftime here, uh, we will be showing you the band. We will be trying to let you hear as much as possible. But uh, one thing to be aware of is we will talk over them because if we don't, the YouTube and Facebook police will get us for copyright infringement of the music. So we try and at least show you as much as we possibly can, let you hear as much as we can without getting thrown in Facebook jail. Curtis back to throw. Curtis swings it out, has a man there. It's Yao. Yao has another first down. Same play, opposite direction, and the Muskies are in business down to the 12-yard line. Well, this is something obviously North did not prepare for defensively, and it's working beautifully. We didn't prepare for this. Well, credit the coaching staff. They knew Ty wasn't going to be here tonight. They had to do something to move the ball and do something okay. that North wasn't prepared for, and this has been it. Here's the give. Yao, Yao has a hole. Yao to the five. Yao steps through the defender and into the end zone. Touchdown, Muskies. Much needed life back on the Muscatine sideline as they have cut this lead in half and can add another one here on the Oathmer extra point with 131 left in this second quarter. Are we a player late to come out on the field? Play clock just starting now, so plenty of time. Curtis on the hold. Snap behind him. Curtis gets it down. Kick is up. The kick is through. And with 131 left, the Muskies now trail 12 to 7. We'll be right back. And that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to Back here in Muscatine, it's now 12 to 7. Muskies will kick it away. 131 left. North still has two timeouts. And Othmer will likely send this one into the end zone. Kick is high, deep, and in, indeed a touchback. And now the defense can make a hold here. This is a whole different feel to it. Now you have life. You had hope going into the second half. A second half, again, the Wildcats have struggled mightily after the break this season. And, and the facts to, to back that up, first half, the Wildcats 72 points, four 72 points against. Second half, 69 points, four 111 against. Woo. So uh, they have struggled coming out of the break. Hopefully for the Muscatine Muskies, that will be the case again. For Barczyk, out of the pistol, back to throw. Slings it off and over the outstretched hands of his receiver, incomplete. This is where uh, defense, you got an opportunity here. The Rabarczyk has thrown seven interceptions on the season. Hand off to Bogan. Bogan still on his feet. Does a little dance and able to get 
back to the line of scrimmage, and now we had a little extracurriculars there. All's fine and good. Players got a little entwined as they tried to get up, and now we got a third down and long situation for the Wildcats. Clock ticking, Rabarczyk rifles it behind his receiver, incomplete, and now you got a chance to get the punt return going. 55 seconds left, and with this newfound passing game, who knows right now? That's plenty of time to do just about anything you want. You can get a good return. You got. It's important to catch the ball. Don't let another bounce of 20 yards happen right here. At least catch it. And set up your team in a good field position. Gunner comes out late onto the field, and now they're set to go. Mason Bogan, again, the running back on the team, does the punting. He lets it fly. It's a high kick. Fair catch called for and bobbled. Players jump on it. Oh, who got it? So that was a, a scary situation there for the Muskies. They do come away with the ball and have a chance now with 52 seconds left. Again, all three timeouts still in the back pocket. And as we always say, you can't spend them at high V. Spend them here. Wing formation, Curtis will hand off Yao. Yao has uh, some room into North Territory down to the 43 and importantly steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Saves a timeout and we do have a flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. And that takes all the wind out of your sails right there. Uh, the gentleman with the white hat calling holding Locked down to 44 seconds. We'll see how aggressive Coach Hawkins wants to be now on a first and 20. You got a strong legged kicker. If you can get down to about the 30 yard line, you got a chance at a field goal. You're 34 yards away from that right now. Here's the give, and uh, about three, four yards on the carry. Clock continues to run. It's second down. Fans are, are kind of vocal about wanting to see a timeout here. Coach Hawkins gonna play this a little more conservative. Let's get it to halftime, down by five. Unless they can break something here. Curtis back to throw, loses the ball, and falls on it. That just looked like it slipped right out of his hand. And that is a good time to take us to halftime. Halfway through this one, North has the lead, 12-7. You're watching Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. To a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. 
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. So it's time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. Hey, Hustler. Roland Glenn, Mike, Chris Anderson uh, back here at what's turned into Muskie Tom, Baseball Field. Tom Bruner North. What, uh, northwest? Not quite sure. They're, they're setting up the outfield wall right now as the band gets ready to play. And uh, looking at what we saw in the first half, it was a, a rainy, messy start to this game. Both teams really grounding their offense. And, and it we expect that out of the Muskies because that's been their offense this year. North likes to throw the ball. They couldn't early. The North almost scored a touchdown, fumbled the ball at the one-yard line. A, a big play saving the Muskies, but the Muskies also fumbled the ball later uh, at their own one-yard line, which led to a North touchdown. So turnovers have played a big role in this game thus far. Uh, most eye-opening, though, is once the rain stopped, uh, the Muskies have kind of gone air raid and have all of a sudden thrown the ball more than they have all season kind of okay. put together, and it's been effective. I'm still flabbergasted by this, Roland. Like, I, I almost don't know what to say. It's such a shift in their offensive philosophy from what we've seen, and, and not even just the last seven games, the last several years, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, this is, uh, you know, looking at this, we have a sophomore quarterback running around, throwing the ball on the run, off his back foot, with some zip. Is this maybe a glimpse into the future of musky football? I, I don't know, but if it is, it sure looks fun. It, it's, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier when the Muskies appeared like they weren't going for it on fourth down. They ran a fake punt, and and it's, you know, I was critical, and, and Coach ran the fake punt, so I, I'm applauding it all the way. It, it's you, your season's on the line tonight. Yeah. You have to win this ball game. It, you know, you're without your star running back. You got to tell your team, hey, we're all in. We're pulling all the punches tonight to get this victory. It's going to take everything, and we're going to do that. And, and I think we've seen that with Muscatine tonight. The fake punt, the throwing the ball, because the defense was not ready for this tonight at all. Uh, the North defense was not ready for Muskie's throwing the ball. So, you know, con yeah, kudos to this coaching staff for going all in and, and doing everything possible to get offense. Well, and that's, you know, we talk about this often, you know, where usually there's a couple of 50-50 plays that, you know, kind of decide a game. This doesn't look like that's going to be it. This looks like it's going to be 
a whole lot of plays that have to work together in order for it to work. You know, it's not going to be a game that just hinges on something. They're going to have to string together a bunch of strong plays, mix it up. Maybe now we see that double handoff to Cooper Yao to keep him off the play action. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, and as a quick, again, a little side note here, folks. As Jeff Hyde's Mighty Muskie Marching Band gets ready to fire up here, uh, just a quick reminder that, uh, unfortunately, we can't just play out the audio for this. Um, you can, <laughs> as you can tell, Mr. Hyde just fired everything up. Um, and we have to kind of keep talking over the band because, unfortunately, if we don't keep talking, YouTube and Facebook will throw us in jail. And then they'll pull the stream and none of us get to watch anything. So... We're going to do the best we can to, you know, let you enjoy what the band does here. Because this is an excellent, excellent performance. Um, they've been working on it all season. It's going to be their uh, state uh, program. Um, you know, you've got the replica of the uh, 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 Fenway score. Well, actually, is it really the green? It's not really. The, you know, they were telling me it was a replica of... Fenway, but it, or th pardon me, they said it was the Green Monster, and all of a sudden I'm thinking it doesn't really. It's not. It's it's there's. It is. I see the scoreboard. Yeah, we right. just don't have the 26 foot fence. The 26 feet. I, I know, but I, that's oh. what I'm thinking. Is like it's. I mean, if you're gonna do it, let's do it. Come you're on, criticizing Mr. him not building a 26 foot wall at this point. I am absolutely requesting that Mr. Hyde goes all in for these kids that put in so much time and effort and get them a 26 foot fence for their performances. Anything less for our Muskies is unacceptable. Well, the Muskies need to win tonight and next week to make the playoffs. They need they probably they need help. I don't know if they need help, but we're going to check out the scoreboard nonetheless and and look at some interesting games out there this evening. Uh, they are playing late second quarter. I think they're going to halftime right now. Iowa City West leads Pleasant Valley 11-10. to 10. That's interesting. Bettendorf That's in the second quarter leads Cedar Rapids Prairie 7-2. to 2. So obviously rain is kind of keeping a lot of these scores, I think, down tonight. But 7-2, to two, a weird score these, right there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of weird scores floating around here. Uh, Cedar Rapids Kennedy... Uh, they're pretty much in the playoffs. They're playing Cedar Falls tonight. Cedar Falls has some work to do. That game is tied right now up at the Unidome, 7-7 seven, seven second quarter. And uh, the big one in the metro area of Des Moines, number one against number two in the state, Southeast Polk leads West Des Moines Dowling 10-7 to seven in the second quarter there. Hey, now there is a normal football score. Yeah. Fun game out there tonight is take me out to the ball game. You may be able to decipher playing now. And uh, we'll continue to, to watch these. And, and, again, it all becomes moot if you don't win this game tonight. Right. Now, you know, if things hold the way they've held all season for North, again, second halves have been a problem. Right now they're down there. And I know Coach Fisher and Coach Height, defensive coordinator and head coach for North, are trying to come up with a game plan to stop the pass right now because they have not at all thought about that. So they're they're readjusting in the locker room and trying to figure out how you stop a passing game. And so, okay, if, if you're north and, you know, you're expecting and all week you're telling everybody, all right, we're just going to throw everybody up on the line of scrimmage and – that's how we're going to play defense. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you, what are you telling them? Like, are we going to drop back into a zone? They're going to try and go man to man. They don't know what these receivers can do. Uh, how are you going to approach that? You, you kind of have to rethink things a little bit. Uh, I, you know, you have to maybe loosen up a little bit in the box and, and respect it now because the Muskies have shown this wasn't just one or two plays. They have shown the ability. They haven't shown the deep ball yet, but they've shown the ability to hit the tight end across the middle, to hit those little swing patterns, and that is going to probably open things up a little bit now because, again, if they didn't know before the game that Tyco's was out, they know now. Right. And, and they know that, well, 
we don't have to stuff the box as much because their running attack, it, it, we still have to respect it, but it's not as strong as it would be with Ty Kozet out there. So now we maybe can get away with not putting eight in the box. Now we have to stop this passing game a little bit more. So right now they're scrambling and, and switching things up. And I think what's going to be interesting about that is, you know, as you, you talk about the change in the look of the offense and, and what the run game looks like, Titan tended to be off tackle up the middle. But when you see Cooper Yao and some, like, getting the ball, they're, they're running outside. They're moving the ball horizontally to go vertically. And just even that alone is a tremendous difference in how you're going to skip your defense. Yeah, it's a different look right now, and it's exciting. It's exciting to see you knew you needed to do something different. They're trying something different, and they're in this ball game. This was not – even if Ty was playing tonight, this was still going to be a dangerous game. North is, is a team that has struggled this year, but they've lost some close games. You know, they look at Davenport West. They lost 13-6. to uh, They went up to Dubuque to play Hempstead. They lost 21-14. You know, if you get a touchdown either way, you're not 2-5. and five. You're 4-3, and three and you're in the playoff hunt. So uh, football's a funny game. One or two plays make a difference in a season, and, and this North team has been on the wrong ends of those plays, and that's why they're coming in 2-5. and five. But they have athletes over there that are going to be dangerous, and, and this was never going to be kind of a pushover game. Well, and as you started off at the beginning of the season, you know, you were – looking at the schedule and you're going okay where are the five games that we can win right yeah and throughout the whole thing you know we knew there were going to be tough games the pv game you know of course those are going to be tough those aren't always you know you don't look at it going oh my goodness that's going to be a w right mm -hmm. so it, it always kind of came down to these last two weeks right you know there were some winnable games maybe the lynn mars and maybe some of those that you'd hope to get the win on but as you looked at it we we knew you know, for probably, what, about week three, that these two games are going to decide what happens. And sure enough, here we are, and the Muskies have, it appears so far, prepared for it. Okay, here we go. That was the big home run by the band. We're still waiting for them to change the scoreboard. scoreboard. Did, right? I, Did they come up with that I, tweak yet? You know, Jeff had said that they were going to talk about it because my... My concern here is, yes, they've they've just scored the. I, I guess it's the Muskies have come I, back. I feel to like win. it was a walk off grand slam. But, yeah, right, you know. I I know, and like that's where you just want to see those four runs go up on the board and make it six to two, and you know, really give them the credit for right. the grand slam. But well, maybe they'll fix that for their competition. Uh, he, he talked about it uh, because it, it does seem possible because that's. That's like this huge vinyl thing, and you know they can get something they can put up on it. But um, so let's let's look forward a little bit here. So, uh, Sir Caleb had asked, you know, where are we next week? Well, next week we're up in Dubuque mm -hmm. uh, at senior for the end of the season. So let's let's kind of game this out. Obviously, we lose. We need a whole bunch of help everywhere, and we're not even gonna we're not even gonna go down that road because it's not even really. I don't even know if it's not I don't, possible. I don't think it's feasible if you lose tonight. Yeah, I don't, really don't. I, I don't. I can't think of how it could possibly work. But so let's talk about if they win. Okay. Yep. And then let's say that what are the things that are going to determine? I mean, is it points for, points against? Is it win margins? Is it just it, record it, against record? It really just comes down to the RPI and, and your strength of schedule. Your opponent's records are, are kind of 40% of that formula. And then your opponent's opponent's records are the – 20%. Of course, your record's 40%. So it doesn't matter if you win by one or if you win by 50. you got to get these wins. And then it, can you pass those teams? We talked about Roosevelt losing last night. So if Muscatine wins, they're going to move ahead of them. Uh, a score tonight, Liberty leads Waterloo West right now 28 to nothing. Waterloo West is ranked 22nd. So you would move ahead of them. Um, then, you know, you got Hempstead and West playing each other. You'd move a ahead of the loser there. So you're guaranteed to at least be 21st going into the last week. And, and I think you probably move ahead of one or two more. I'm looking at if they win tonight, they'll probably be about 19 going into the last week. 
and then you, you got to win and you got to hope three teams ahead of you lose and a lot of those teams are playing each other so it, it's not as daunting as it seems because some of them are going to be guaranteed to lose like Davenport West plays Cedar Falls um, in the last week Johnston plays Sioux City East in the last week uh, so it, it's possible Iowa City West Cedar Rapids Prairie play each other City High and Bendorf uh, Linmar and PV so there's a lot of teams meeting up so really you just got to take care of your own business you know and, and we'll we'll figure out a little more after tonight if they get the win tonight and we'll get those other scores in and I'll go to my you know math room and, and figure it all out exactly you have a math room math room not the bathroom I will go to sometimes the bathroom is the math room you know if the math is taking too long but we'll figure this all out and see exactly the scenarios that might hurt or help them but uh, the big one tonight is is just get this win tonight and you know ultimately at the start of the season you can't ask for much more than to have the result of your season in your own hands where you're determining your own fate and that's exactly where we're at city high leads linmar tonight 14 to nothing that linmar team is a, a curious team they just looked so good against us now they're they're losing tonight they had a tight one last week against Davenport West so we'll see what happens there but uh, Linmar is a team now, now something else to talk about because we haven't talked about it all year if you finish 16 you got to make sure the team that finishes 17 isn't Linmar or isn't a team that beat you because there's a stipulation in those rules that if you the head-to-head -head comes to play if you are right behind that team so if you're 17 and you beat 16, you move up to 16. That That's out there, which also helps if you're 17 and say Davenport West is 16. Then you're going to jump ahead of Davenport West. It just, it's trying to make the head-to-head -head count more, and, and I applaud the Athletic Association for that. It, I think it's the right thing to do. I, But is it? I mean, if you're going to create this huge math thing and you're yeah. going to put so much on the record – you know, head to head doesn't always mean anything. You know, it, it look means at, everything. No, it it doesn't because just because you lose to one team doesn't mean that you're gonna, not going to line up completely differently and go against a different team and do better, worse, whatever. But he let me let me but let me no. Well, no, let me make my point. No, if if no, it's my air, baby. If Muscatine <laughs> finishes seventeenth and Davenport West or Dubuque Hempstead finishes sixteenth. You you mean to tell me that everyone, all the Muskie fans aren't going to be mad? I'm not going to say hey, we beat Hempstead head to head. We right, finish like th a thousandth of a point behind them in some mathematical formula. Right, but that's the way the world works. Well, I I think I win this one because the yeah. athletic association's on my yeah, side. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how often I disagree with the athletic association. So that this is all holding oh, true. Oh no, they they do a lot of things that aren't well, great. But, but but again, here's my thing. Like I here's I don't actually mind it per se, but it, realistically, if you're going to go to all this effort to figure out, you know, your opponent's opponent's record, and you know, if the moon was in its third <laughs> phase when you beat so and so, it, you've kind of said head to head doesn't matter at that point, right? Like, and again, unless you're going to go back to those same two teams playing each other in the playoffs, the head-to-head -head doesn't matter anymore. Hey, do you go outside kick here? Um, You've already shown, like, you're going for it. I mean, you fake uh, punt. I don't. I I don't think I do yet. I don't know. Yeah, it's... It, I, I'm saying it wouldn't be a bad play. North does look like they have some some hands guys up front. I don't think that's planned. I think that's just how they normally go. But you know, and I'm not normally a field position guy, but uh, you know, when Mr. Othmer does this, sure, I I think I got to take the consistency of that in the field position. I, I don't hate either way. I was just throwing it out there as you know. No, I I'm with you. I'm we with you. we've seen it work against us this year. Where I think it was, wasn't it Davenport West that came out with an onside kick early in the game, and they uh, got yeah, it, it was. back. Yep. So 
it, it can be, you know, an, un, an unexpected situation. It really helps your odds of getting it back. But not to be here. First and 10 north. Conditions much better outside. Now all the umbrellas are put away. And we expect to see more passing probably both ways now. But Barczyk will hand off to Bogan. Bogan's loose. Still on his feet. Has the first down. A pickup of 12 yards on the first play of the third quarter. Bogan got up a big... Uh, in some pain there as he's still kind of holding his hip as he gets back. And Rabarczyk kind of throw it, slings it out, and down goes the receiver like an old tree to a chainsaw. Oh, we just missed it on the replay, just outside of the view. Brookhart, nice tackle, and second down upcoming for North. Now Bogan leaves the game. He's definitely in some pain still. Oh, snap almost hit the man in motion. He's going the wrong oh. direction. High tackle. No flags come out. You held your breath for a minute on that. Oh, that's the old clothesline tackle right there. And a big loss on second down. So this musky defense a bit fired up after giving up the big first down play. They've come back with two strong defensive efforts and now third down in 16 upcoming for the Wildcats. 10 seconds on the play clock as they look a bit confused. Rabarczyk and Pena talking, play clock down to three. Rabarczyk in trouble and down he goes. Sacked on the play. There was confusion right from the get-go on North. I don't know if Rabarczyk was trying to hand off to Pena or what. Pena went a different direction. Rabarczyk taken down, and out comes the punting unit for North. And Bogan, again, still in pain, is your punter. So he's coming out, and he's not 100%. This could be interesting. Yeah, it looks like, are they? Man laid out in the field. Play clock down to five seconds. He's still not sacked. That's Pena. Two, and they are going to get it off. Bad what? snap. The ball, Ooh. Bogan gets it off. He picked up the ground ball, and there's a big hop out of bounds. And that went about as well as it could have for North, considering a, just a horrible snap. A dribbler back to Bogan. Bogan, again, in pain. Both teams have had a hard time getting the right number of guys out on special teams plays tonight. That that was so close to a huge play. So close to a block or a fumble or something. But nonetheless, Muskies have the ball. Touchdown gives them a lead. And a field goal gives them 10. Here's the give. Yao. Yao's got some room. Yao has the corner. Yao ducks in. Yao's at the 40, and he's still on his feet to the 30. Down to the 20. Yao steps out of bounds. First down, Muscatine. That was so nice. Let's watch it twice. Hard running by number 21. A big gain down to the 17-yard line. That momentum definitely on the side of the purple and gold now. Curtis, hands off. Brookhart, Brookhart on his feet, rumbles down near the 10 yard line. I love seeing Brookhart get nice and low, choppy feet movement, keeping him moving, leaning forward. We have a North player slow to get up. We'll take a quick timeout. Be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Turf quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless. 
anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break. The number one. Yeah. We're back on the air. Bryson Antle, the injured uh, Davenport North defender, and he's their leading tackler. So Antle's out of the game. Big opportunity here for Muscatine. Curtis, hands off Yao. Yao, still on his feet. Carrying tacklers inside the five yard line. Uh, first down, Muscatine. Well, Antle, a big part of this Davenport North defense. Without him out there, that's going to open up that running game even more right now for Muscatine. Uh, and, folks, just uh, a quick thing here. Uh, obviously, as I said, we've been inside because of the rain. Uh, this is a really tough angle for us to get to, so we're trying to get some cameras moved around to get it. Here's uh, Brookhart. Brookhart down to about the one-yard line. Well, you're feeling better about things now, much more so I, than we were about 40 minutes ago. Absolutely. You know, this is a this looks like a dynamic offense. This looks like, you know, as we were talking during the break, you know, man, imagine the kind of holes this could have opened up in the beginning of the season. Right? I would love to see a quarterback sneak here. There's the quarterback sneak. And uh, it looked uh, like he did, broke the plane. I'm not sure how they're calling him short, but they are. I, yay, yay, yay. What? I don't know. While we wait for them to clean up that mess, quick shout out to Roger Strong, all the way from Loveland, Colorado, the MHS class of 1974. There were two epic classes in uh, the early 70s, 73, which was my dad, Denny Anderson, uh, Doug Krieger, Mike Booney Kleist, uh, and then 74, they still battle it out at the cake auction every year. Here we go. Again, there's a, look like a fumbled snap and a flag and it's a red flag and all kinds of not goodness happening there. Looks like the penalty will be on north. So you'll move it half the distance, which will be a couple inches, but you save the down and get another crack at this here. And this is really four down territory with the ball right on the goal line. And now we have Colorado you can cross off your list too. We do. So we've only got what? 42-ish states left to go. Uh, I apologize for tossing to you with food in your mouth. I'm <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a ways to go, yeah. Did we get Maine or not? I don't think we counted Maine, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, boy. That Maine person was actually just uh, literally right. Uh, how that ball house. is not in the end zone right there is, is amazing. That is as close as you can get without being in. Third down and a centimeter. The give, Brookhart, Brookhart Ooh. bounces into the end zone, and the Muskies go on top. In, in, in some home in Muscatine right now, Ty Kozad's jumping on somebody. Just that would not surprise me <laughs> at all. This is a kid who, with a messed up hamstrings, running down the field to celebrate exactly. with his friends. So I mean, like I, I don't know. Uh oh. And, oh. Wow. Well, close do see, call there, but the point is good. I do see. I believe 
Lincoln Brookhart walking around down there without crutches, uh, which is uh, – a huge thing that is good to see you know i don't for those of you that uh weren't with us uh, literally on the first play of the muskies offensive season uh lincoln went down heard a snap and and unfortunately it was over but i don't know wherever ty is he's he's still hollering let's go out on youtube so oh yeah he's got internet wherever he is there we go so 14 12 Muskies on top, 7-11 left in the third quarter, 7-11. <laughs> I'm going slushy, not rolling. Well, yeah, I, I went with Vegas. Well, you know, the Muskies had for a long time sported Vegas gold on their uniforms, but you'll notice it's lacking at the moment. We've gone more of a... Back in black. Yeah. There's more orange on the field right now than there is gold. And there come the bright orange shoes of Jackson Othmer into the end zone once again. He'll pad his stats on that. And a touchback will pin North back again, uh, back to their 20-yard line. And now it's an important stand again for this defense. Don't give North any life back. They've struggled in the second half this season. You just scored, took the lead. Don't let them uh, get any momentum back right now. You know, and this is something we often talk about in the Muskie volleyball games. You know, the girls have progressed extremely well throughout the season, and they've taken on that killer instinct of not letting off the gas. They've, they've had several sweeps at home and they just don't let off. And that's – the boys could learn something from those girls throughout this – whoa, little little extra there at uh, midfield. That pass completed. Just shy of a first down. That uh, Jaden Stuckle on the catch. Here's the, the fake handoff. He pulled it back and maybe not the right decision. Rabarczyk goes down for a loss. Cooper Yao. And uh, looked like Frankie was there as well on the tackle. Third down upcoming. We'll call it about five yards for the Cats. They'll send trips out to the bottom of your screen. Rabarczyk in the pistol. Back to throw. Looks, slings it over the middle, and the ball's knocked away. Again, Cooper Yao steps in front, deflects it. Is there anything that kid can't do? And fourth down upcoming for the Cats. Well, you know, we needed a hero tonight, right? Maybe we needed about 10 or 12 heroes, actually. And and we're, we're slowly getting there. These guys have stepped up, and what can you say about Gage Curtis? What can you say about Cooper Yao? Every one of them needed to step up their game tonight without Ty being there, and, and so far so good. Offensive line doing a great job of moving the line of scrimmage forward. Again, some pressure. The punt will bounce just past we, midfield. and That was roll. a musky bounce for the first time tonight. Roll back to the 50. So great field position for the Muskies as they look to extend on their lead. 14 to 12, midway through this third quarter of play. And now you just have so much balance on offense right now that this this defense is just kind of guessing instead of knowing Heck, what the guessing. Muskies are going to do. Wing formation. And uh, there was a good job by that Wildcat defense. They read that option play. And uh, Aiden Lopez nowhere to go, losing three yards on the play. Bryson Antle back out on the field for Davenport North. He was injured on that last drive.
Wishbone look here for the Muskies. Here's Brookhart trying the far end and brought down after about a gain of a yard. Bryson Antle, 49 and a half tackles on the season, and, and he missed a game, was suspended for a game this season. So doing that in uh, six ball games. Third and long, let's see if we go back to the air here. Back to throw, Curtis. Curtis has some time, rolling out, still looking, fires it towards the sidelines. And was he in bounds, the official? It really did not have a good angle on it, couldn't see. So we don't know what's going to happen here. The official, said, the official on the sidelines doesn't know, and he's looking for help right now. And I believe they're going to call it a catch. And he's going over to ask his buddy if he saw it. He got pushed back behind all the muskies on the bench. Well, I don't think you can overrule right now. That's got to be a catch. So we inbounds are out bounds. Yeah, it's it's an inbounds. It's a catch, and it's a fourth down and about seven upcoming. And out comes Othmer. Now Othmer did fake one earlier tonight. This is a little different situation. You're up by two. This is a good spot to pin down an offense, which is struggling. But it's still the possibility is out there. High Whoa. snap. Othmer pulls it down. No rush. High kick. Don't get too close. Ooh. And the fair catch is made at the 18-yard line. You want to get close enough to scare them, but you, that's a yeah, real that's almost too close there. That could have been a penalty, really. But no flag thrown, and it will be north of ball. Back at the 18-yard line. Now the defense still only a two-point lead, and now the flag, there was a flag dropped. Not sure if it was actually a, a penalty or just a dropped flag, and uh, I think that was the latter there, so no penalty on the play. Sometimes they just fall out of your pocket, Chris. The bar check swings it out that. into the flat. Has his receiver, but not a whole lot in the yardage department. Pulled out of bounds. A gain of maybe one on the play. That was Israel Harper on the catch for the Wildcats. Second and nine now for North. I want to know what the story is with the red flag. Like, did he wash it with some red clothes? Did it, they not have yellow flags at the referee store? It's probably one from Menards. There's a story there, and I feel like we need to know it. I don't. We need to invest in a sideline reporter for this very instance. We absolutely do not. My son's in yeah. the bush. I send my son down absolutely. to the sideline yes. and... Ask what the red flag's about. He does not look like he likes that idea. Third down, back to throw. Rabarchek looking, still looking, pulls it down now in a tripped up ankle tackle. Saves the day, short of the first down. And out comes the punting unit for North. Now this is a fourth and about two situation. And again, the punter is the running back for the Wildcats. So you need to really be in a, a safe call right here if you're the Muskies. Bogan has it. Bogan will punt it away. Could be returnable. Lopez drops uh -oh. the ball, picks it back up, and is brought down at the 40-yard line. So crisis averted for the Muskies. They will start their drive 60 yards away from Paydirt with 2.56 left here in quarter number three. Just has that feeling like we haven't seen the last turnover on the night. 
Well, and we still have a special teams touchdown to account for. That's true, too. So I've got a feeling it's going to be exciting. <laughs> well, hopefully it's, not, like hopefully it's not a kick return because that means North would score again. And here's the pass yeah, play rolling out. No one's there. Like where? Is that there were no receivers. Run? So that Curtis somehow stiff-armed his way into only a loss of one on the play. We have a very astute watcher who thinks it very well could be a pink flag for breast cancer awareness rather than red. Seems possible, I suppose. Yep. I like that. I, you know what? Even if it's not true, that's what we're going to run with yeah. for tonight. Good on that ref. That You know what, ladies? Just a quick reminder. Go do what you're supposed to do. I'll be honest. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Cooper Yao runs north-south like he's supposed to do, and it's uh, only about a three-yard pickup, so third and long upcoming for the Muskies. 2.30 left to go, third quarter. And another passing situation for this new air raid offense. Lopez brings in the play. Still 15 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. Lopez will split off towards the top of the screen. Wing formation. North showing some pressure. Here's that reverse play, and North... Well, Oops. more lucked into it right there. They just happen to be right where that play was run, and Cooper Yao runs into a wall. And out comes the punting unit once again. Big number 74 was met Cooper Yao in the ball pretty much at the same time. You know, these last couple series have sort of reminded me of that exchange, I believe it was early second quarter, when we had the ball, picked it up on the one, and then all of a sudden we lost about 100 yards over about four exchanges. And I'm afraid we're doing that at the moment. So what do we need to do here to make sure that we start at least moving the ball forward enough to prevent that well, field position loss? What we have to do is be a little smarter first off. There was, again, interference on a fair catch called, and the pink flag is out. Now – the the receiver never really got to the ball, but uh, the kick was a little shorter. I, and I'm not sure, but I think I, I, was Brickhart maybe trying to explain that to him there? He's trying. I don't think it's going to work. You know, I'll say this, folks. I, I, I've mentioned this a couple times. I got to sit down with uh, the Brickhart triplets uh, oh, about halfway through the season, and, you know, we got to uh, hang out at the plaza here at the stadium, and those are three good kids. They're just absolutely fun to watch on the football field. It was a blast talking with them, hanging out with them, getting some insights into what it's like to be Alvin Simon and Theodore, you know, assigned colors and growing up playing sports together. And uh, just great kids, love to see them thriving out on the football field. 15-yard penalty. Sets North up in good field position. Here's Bogan looking for the corner. Bogan cuts it up. Still on his feet. Reverses his angle now. And uh, all that for about three yards. Uh, you know, I think I, I want to take a look at this here. I think we've got probably uh, 10. Uh, he had to have run a solid 20 yards sideways. Bogan a dangerous, dangerous athlete. Got to keep him in check right now. This is still just a two-point ball game. And here's Bogan with the ball. Bogan, room up the middle, just shy of a first down. Call it a third and one upcoming for the Cats and definite four-down territory. Again, their field goal unit pretty much non-existent. They're one of three on the season. That was a 22-yarder. Here's the fake. Rabarczyk back to throw. Looking deep. He has a man wide uh -oh. open all by himself, and he falls down. Oh, oh my, oh, my. North, Davenport North had a touchdown. If Rabarczyk just lays the ball out a little bit farther. He short-armed it, and the receiver tried to come back to the ball but fell down doing so, and the Muskies catch a huge break. You know, those are the plays that the last couple of weeks haven't gone the Muskies' way, so... Hopefully now you fire up as a defense, realize they're not afraid to throw the ball down the field, and then... Just beautiful play action there. 
sucked everybody up, and uh, the Muskies are lucky. Fourth down now and one. The offense on the field. An interesting spot of the ball. They pretty much just gave them an extra yard on the spot. And I think they're going to fix it. They completely just gave them an extra yard. Now the official will move it back. They giveth and taketh away. <laughs> well, at least at least you catch your mistakes, and here they go. North, hands off. Pena up the middle. Pena, I think, got the first down. Let's take a little tighter look here. I, You know what? I don't. Well, they're going to spot it, and that's going to be a first down where they spot the ball. I, I don't. Let's take a look at this again here, Roland. Look at this. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Oof. They're all talking right now, but either measure it or don't, guys. But figure it out. Again, that looks like a first down. I, from where the ball is to where the 35-yard line is, and I'm looking at the – it looks like the 34 or the 36 yard line was the first down. So I think you, even the North guys are like, "Come on, dude, just make up your mind." What What are we? I mean, it's a big it's a big moment in the game. So I understand bringing the sticks up, but it, it looks like but, that's a first down. Uh, oh, now they're gonna make make the move. Twenty-one seconds left in this third quarter. Fourteen to twelve, Muskies lead. <laughs> who, who is number nine? Or is that number eight? Uh, I think it's Connell Burridge. Animated uh, young man. What? Why is this? Being, is why is this so difficult right now? I'm. I'm not entirely. I wonder, what do you, th what do you think we do replay on the measurement and see? I mean, here's the thing: I don't necessarily disagree with the fact that that being a first down. I, I'm just curious why it was so painful. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, I, and here's the thing, folks: I know referees have a tough job. Like, I get it. I, So first down, and we'll get set to get things going again. North does not have to run a play if they don't want to, but it looks like they fully intend to. And back to throw, and looking they're, deep they're again. again. He lets it fly. Got a man down we there. Got, it's no, passed got, short, though, and that, it's intercepted. That was Mr. Jackson Othmer. Jackson Othmer, you can tell by the shoes. He makes our life so easy. Well, North had a receiver open, but once again, Kaz Rabarczyk throws it short. And Jackson Othmer, I said That's we hadn't seen our last turnover yet tonight, and sure enough, there it was. Muskie's ball late in the third quarter. And, you know, that's a senior shining on senior night. There you go. That's the eighth interception this season by Kaz Rabarczyk. Now the Muskies need to run some clock and move the ball. There's Cooper Yao, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Muskies need the win tonight to keep those playoff hopes alive. They're 12 minutes away, leading 14 to 12. We'll be right back. Just down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work, and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. 
When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. Back here, ready to start the fourth quarter. Muskies have the ball. 12 minutes away from victory. Big drive right here to chew up some clock, Cooper Yow. Trying to find a hole and picks up maybe a yard on the play. will bring up a third down. A big game out in the Des Moines area tonight. Number one and number two in the state are playing, and they're going to overtime. Tied up between Southeast Polk and Dowling, 17-17. Up at the Unidome, Cedar Falls leads Cedar Rapids Kennedy, 17 -17. To seven, a bit of an upset there, and City High has a 14-0 lead still on Linmar. Third down, we'll see how aggressive the Muskies want to be here. Some movement up front, and they'll hand off a little delayed handoff and a big burst of speed by Aiden Lopez. First down, Muscatine. This was. They faked a high snap. They faked a toss to the outside. That's They're how playing 3D chess right now. And uh, a final from up in Dubuque. It's Davenport West beating Hempstead 14-8. to Interesting score. And there's a nice run and a big pickup on first down for Muscatine. And uh, that's if you're really looking at it, who you want it to win, you want it West to win. So that's good for the Muskies because West – Play Cedar that's, Falls next week. So. That's what those four pages of chicken scratches says? Yep, you that, want West to win? I want West to win <laughs> against Hempstead tonight, and they did. Because, just because. West has a tough game next week, and Hempstead plays Davenport Central. So if you could get both of them to go one and one in the last two weeks, you can pass them both. And right now it looks like they're both going to go one and one. Clock sits at 10:24. A second down and a long upcoming. Call it second and nine for the Muskies. And we're trying to wind the clock, and we do. Wishbone look for Muscatine. Thompson split off towards the bottom of your screen, and the give up the middle. And Lopez gets it to the 40-yard line. That will bring up a third and five. Clock down to 10 minutes left. Still only a two-point ball game. Can't get too conservative right now. You want to run clock, but you got to move the chains as well. Lopez comes in with the play. Play clock down to 18 seconds. Curtis calls it out. And here's the give. Yao, Yao looks for some room. Yao hacks for the corner. Yao has the first down and stays in bounds. And now a late flag thrown. That flag, is it, for, is it a ooh. horse collar? I, I believe it. looked like that was the initial signal from the man who threw the flag. Based on the replay, that would be a good guess. Horse collar penalty, so tack on another 15 yards, and the Muskies are in business. And if you can score a touchdown here, oh, that little win percentage that you always see on ESPN, that jumps up, right? From like, from like what, 60% up to like 93%, I'm thinking, is the exact number. That's also what's in that math? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Beautiful mind right here, son. Just a beautiful mind. Numbers are just flying. <laughs> okay, here's a number for you. Let's uh-huh. see if anybody out in the audience can get this. Hey. Longest. Is it? It what? looks like twenty. <laughs> is Truesdale back in? There's the give to Brookhart, and Brookhart goes nowhere. So longest field yeah. goals mm-hmm. in Muscatine history. There's a tie. What do you think? Longest field goal, Muscatine history. Forty-eight yards. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No no no! <laughs> okay, I, I'm only taking one guess. So, fifty-four yards. It was only six off. What was that? Oh no no no! No no no! Edgar Arceo and Joey Krieger. Wishbone look. Here's the give. Here's Brookhart. He's loose. Brookhart inside the thirty. First down, Muskies. All right, you have Lopez and Truesdale both out on the field now. As the clock continues to tick, down to eight minutes left. Here's the give to Brookhart. Brookhart into the line of scrimmage, picks up a a nice three-yard gain, second and seven upcoming. Clock is your friend right now. Continue to move this ball. And run some time off this clock. Thompson back into the game for Muscatine. Another pickup of about three yards on the carry. So mark the ball at the 20-yard line, third down. You're in field goal range right now. Be about a 37-yarder. Interesting decision upcoming if you don't get the first down. Now, Brookhard moved early, and that's going to make this a little bit tougher. March it back to the 25-yard line, which would now make it a 42-yard field goal. Well within Jackson's range. Yes, and I think you got to try it, even though North probably not going to make a field goal. you you got to make it a not a two-point game anymore. Yao goes in motion, and now we have another Ooh, flag. Right and Muscatine going the wrong direction. Third and three, move to third and 13 after two infractions. But the clock continues to move, and the good news is, I guess, if you keep making penalties, you can just run out the clock. I don't know that that's quite the offensive strategy. You keep going backwards five yards, but you're running off 25 seconds every time. It's a brilliant move. Curtis, back to throw, looking. Yow's out there. He doesn't throw it. He's going to keep it. Now he's going to let it go. The ball's tipped and deflected out of bounds. Well, he had Cooper initially continue to roll out, and then uh, I thought he was going to run with it at that point. That does stop the clock, and now it's decision time. You're looking at a 48-yard field goal. It looks like the offense is staying out there for now. Fourth and 13. As Lopez enters the game. Going to try and draw him off sides, bring a timeout? Maybe. Muskie still have all three left. 
It wouldn't be a bad move right now. And now they have to take a timeout because the play clock was down to one. We didn't even get the and, chance to try. Now it. you you got to ask yourself, what's the better percentage play? A 47-yard field goal by Jackson or a 13-yard completion to move the sticks? What's the higher percentage? Or or do you let him pin him back on the two or three? I mean, I think you got to go for the points. I, I, I would put I, punt last because you're at yes, the 30, no. and there's too much of a chance of going in the end zone. Right. Yes, I'm just throwing out options. Yeah. You know, Jackson's had a heck of a game. He's he, he's every bit the kicker that Ty is a runner. And I I think he's he's played it. I think he's earned the shot, but uh, maybe not. He's, uh, you know, he's on the bench, so out comes the offense. And what do you call here? On uh, you got to get down to the twelve yard line. You call the fourth and thirteen. And actually, I think it's yeah. You run the ball, and that's. Truesdale on the carry, and that's a bewildering I'm, I'm decision. Not. Okay, so you missed the field goal. It's seven yards back yeah. from where you were, you and you had the shot at three points. I, it Maybe Jackson wasn't sure of his footing. Maybe the field's still wet. I mean, there's a little wind that would be in his face, but I don't know, you know. Obviously, the staff sees Jackson in practice every day. They know. They, that's what I was just going to say. They know something we don't at this point. They know it, what right. his limits are with the wind and against it and, and all that good stuff. And It's first down and 10 north. And Rabarczyk keeps it. Rabarczyk up the middle has a, a little bit of room and picks up. Maybe four yard, maybe five yards on that carry. You know, every time you say his last name, I'm flashing back to Sonic and Dr. Robotnik. I, just, I feel like he's going to pop out and go chasing Sonic or something. 540 on the clock north. There's Bogan running in the clear. Bogan to the 40, and there's a flag. Crowd was yelling for it. The coaching staff was yelling for it. Came a bit late, but it is it is on the field, and that one's going to come back. Holding. Now that flag it is from where the flag is thrown, so they'll mark it off from about the 38, 39-yard line. Basically, like uh, doing the play over because that's it started at the 28. I guess what you're thinking, if you're the coaching staff, is North can't kick a field goal, so they have to score a touchdown either way. So if you're up by two or if you're up by five, it doesn't matter. That that's my best guess on it, and and there's some reasoning behind that. You look at what they've done in the extra points tonight. Again, some confusion out on the field as they try to sort out where to mark the ball. 5.32 left. The season, the postseason, hangs in the balance for the Muskies right now. Leading by two, have to find a way to get a win tonight and a win next week. Rabarczyk out of the pistol has trips to the top of your screen. He'll hand off. It's a reverse. Cooper Yao gets run around and still on the feet. And a first down for North out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Jackson, Jackson Hothmer there to make sure that he ended up out of bounds. You know, it's always interesting because there's a lot of times, obviously, up here we can see things that they can't see on the field. 
And this was one where I think everybody in the stands knew what was going on. Here's the give to Bogan. Bogan looks for some room. Bogan ducks down to about the 44-yard line. And a lot of restlessness right now, a lot of restless energy yeah. in the stands. Five minutes left in this ball game. Second down and five. Pitch out to Bogan. Bogan tripped Ooh. up at around the 46-yard line. Was that third down upcoming for North. Looks like it was Brookhart that got his hand on it. Save the day there. Nice stop by Brookhart. Third down and three yards to go. North has to get the ball to the 50-yard line. This is pretty much almost four-down territory right now. They do have all their timeouts. Back to throw, Rabarczyk. He swings it out, Bogan. Bogan tripped up right at the yard to gain, and that is a nice spot for Muscatine fans as they mark him down at the 49. It will be fourth down, and the clock continues to tick towards the four-minute mark. Fourth and one. The defense has a chance right now to get off the field. North going tight formation. This has quarterback sneak written all over it. Rabarczyk, the little tush push, will get the first down. That's that Philadelphia Eagle play right there. And the sticks I, will move. North's I, chances remain alive. I still wish the center sneak was a thing. Just telling you. The give, Bogan, Bogan, caught behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. <laughs> Second down and long upcoming. Camden in the for, furnace yep. on the stop. There's another senior coming up big on senior night. Got to talk to his mom. About Back to throw, pressure on. Rabarczyk slings it out there, and the ball's bobbled and it dropped. How is Mama Furnace? She's good. She's, uh, you know, I always enjoy talking with her. Um, you know, obviously, late 80s, uh, the Muskies had some tremendous teams, basketball, yeah. softball, of which she was a part Um and uh, it's, it's just always great to hear her perspective on things. Well, this is a huge play right here. Third down and 12, 315 on the clock. Muskie's looking to bring the pressure right now. Rabarczyk back to throw over the middle, has his man, and has enough for a first down. Kale Perrette, the tight end, will move the sticks for North. Again, a field goal would win it for the Wildcats. But as we've said, that's not quite the option that you would think it is naturally. Bogan, the ball, steps over a tackler and picks up about four yards on first down. Clock under three minutes to play. Now the thing that's going to be interesting is how well the Muskies keep their composure in these last three minutes. Somebody needs to make a play. Well, and we've seen in the past that sometimes they let their emotions get the best of them. So Here's hopefully this is the a throw. chance. Double coverage out there. Trying for Perrette. Incomplete. Darnell Thompson playing a little center field on the football field. Dangerous throw right there by Rabarczyk. Incomplete. Third down. Now 237 left. North still has all three timeouts. Back to throw, Rabarczyk over the middle, has his man. And the catch is made. They'll continue to wind the clock. However, a first down will momentarily stop it. First down, Cats inside of the 30. This is when bend, dope, and break defenses give me a heart attack. This is really reminiscent of that Davenport Central game. 
A little swing pass. Pena has it. Pena on his feet. Pena loose down the sidelines. Derek Pena reaching for the goal line. They mark him down at the one. Let's see if we got it on. Let's see what we've got. The crowd wants and, a fumble. Oh, he goes right into the corner of the press box in the view. I don't think the ground can cause a fumble, but they're marking him down at the one. Oh. A lot of talk right now. The clock stopped at 1.54 to go, and this is just like that central game. Muskies made a stop in that one at the goal line. They're going to have to do it again tonight. 1.54 left. Rabarczyk out of the pistol. Gives it off. Pena actually keeps it. He keeps it. He's going to score. And the Wildcats take the lead. 148 left in the, on the clock. I guess it's too much to ask for two goal line fumbles caused in one season. They're going to go for two. Try to make this a six-point game right now. Throw out into the flat. It's a double pass, and they're calling a touchdown. Was that not a forward pass on the first one? Well, the coaching staff from Muscatine says that was two forward passes. And unfortunately, as we've mentioned, this is the end of the field that we have a hard time getting the cameras to because of the angle we're at. So unfortunately, we don't have a great view of it. So the two points will count. They said that first pass was a lateral. And North is now up 20 to 14. And if the Muskies want to make the playoffs, they got to find a way to score a touchdown a with 108 late. seconds. Now, here's the thing. If you would have told me that playoff hopes would have come down to this three weeks ago, I would have been like, ooh, I'm not, I'm not confident with this. Now, that said, with what we've seen so far tonight, when that air raid offense is going, can you move the ball? 65 yards in a minute 48. Or can we just get our kickoff return right now? Make me look smart. I'll tell you, Darnell, Darnell, man, he's been so close to breaking some all season. Um, we'll see what North does here. This might be a, kind of a squib kick right now. I think that might be the way to go for them to avoid that big play. That run by Derek Pena will be discussed for a long time as he lost the ball. Did the ground cause the fumble? Did he lose it before? Here's a squib kick, and Cooper Yao picks it up at the 20. Yao needs to get a block. Yao needs the corner. He's at the 30. Yao to the 40. Yao needs another block. He's out to the 50 into North Territory. A big yeah. return by Cooper Yao. Seniors do what they do. Well, wait. you got a chance right now. The ball inside North Territory, 139 on the clock. Two timeouts in your back pocket. Number 68 for North did a good job finding the ball there amongst the mess. Out comes the offense. Can young Gage Curtis lead him to victory? Here's a nice pickup on first down, down to the 40-yard line. You got to move with some pace now. Especially if you're going to run the ball up the middle. You don't have time to. There you go. Not a lot of time to huddle. You are correct. 
Curtis is set. Here's another give up the middle, and that's going to be brought down right at the yard to gain. And now a flag comes in late. That was thrown by the back judge. Not sure what happened there. Clock will stop while we sort it out. 105 remaining in this game. We have uh, Sammy's asking who ran a the last late ball. hit on uh, a personal foul on North. I, I, I think it was Dayton Truesdale on the run. So 15 yards closer, and now you're in business down to the 24-yard line. 105 left. Wishbone look. The give, first man through, and picking up maybe two yards. Do you take your time out? Clock is running. 56 seconds. Now they stop it. So the timeout is burnt. You have, I believe, one timeout left. Yes. They're showing two on the scoreboard, however. They were showing six a minute ago, and I don't think that's uh, the case. Yes. And one thing, folks, just so you know, uh, our scoreboard pulls in off the main scoreboard. So bear with them as they keep it updated. So it says two. I think it's one timeout left. I think it. Yeah, I don't think and they're taking one off yet. Yeah. Fifty-five seconds left. The ball at the twenty-two yard line. And where do you put the ball up in the air? You you got to kind of do it soon, I would think. I. I, I don't mean, know how you don't. You can't afford too many two-yard carries. Sammy, take a deep breath. Calm your heart rate. You'll be good. Deep breath. Breathe in and out. So we're ready. 55 seconds left. But we're all right there with you. Thompson split off towards the top. Man goes in motion. Yao. The give back to Truesdale. Truesdale down to about the 19-yard line. The clock ticking 47, 46, 45. Muskies hurry. It is... Third down. They got to get to the 15. Thompson trying to get set up. The clock down to 35 seconds. Back to throw. Throw is near across. side. Cooper Yao can't get to it. And the flag comes out. Let's see if we can get a look at that. Well, the red flag is out. Cooper Yao comes back. Oh, it's just out of the view of the camera. Off our defensive pass interference. Sigh of relief there. That stops the clock. It's a new set of downs. And the wind starts picking up. <sighs> Wendy, slide back on your seat. Now had you kicked Don't the field off. goal last time, all you would need is a field goal to tie. Well, and does it, it changes field position. It changes everything else. Yeah, that's hindsight. Here we go. We're going to have to figure out where to mark this ball. And now 26 seconds left. They're marking it at the 11-yard line. You, you can afford yourself one more run because you have a timeout left. But again, the pass has been working tonight. I, I'm... Yeah, they're, they're trying to tell the chain crew that they still have to work here because the ball's at the 11. The box is up. And now the they're moving the no, ball up no. to the 10. So it's the chain I, the I, chain gang knew more than the officials, so they moved the ball down to the 10. It's first and goal, Muskies. And here is the give up the middle. Brookhart inside the five, down to the four. Now you got to call timeout. Coach He's Hawkins done. sprints down there and gets the time called with 19 seconds left. Second and goal. Season hangs in the balance. They marked it all the way back at the five. It looked like he had gotten farther than that, didn't it? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I sure thought so. Let's take another look at that while they clean everything up here on the yeah, field. Yeah, we have a timeout, so we'll take a look take at a look that here. play. He's going to go off tackle to the left. Down. Uh, yeah, I got it. I mean, it's kind of tough to tell in the. Yeah. Not a good spot no, right there for the Muskies. Not even remotely close to a good spot for the Muskies. But, hey, you got the ball at the five-yard line. And, again, what more can you ask for? Your season is in your hands. You got you got time for three plays here. You can pass, pass, run if it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. Second, third, fourth down. Now, if you run on second down, you really limit yourself. You got to get back up. You got to have two plays called. I think you got to go pass here on second down. Can the sophomore quarterback come up big on senior night? Curtis under center. Wishbone formation. Curtis gives off Yao. Yao reaching for the goal line. He's down at the one. The clock is running. They got to get up. Clock's down to 10 seconds. Muskie's trying to get off a play. Down to eight. Down to seven. And he spikes, spikes. the ball. And that's, uh, Whoa. well, you had one play that's, left either uh, way. Oh. Unless you ran a quick pass. So we're down to fourth down right now. The ball at the one, and you got one play left. Plenty of time on the play clock to call this one. Thompson split off. It's a wishbone formation. Curtis, Curtis gives off. Reaching for the goal line. Touch He's got it. Touchdown, Muskies. He's got it. The Muskies are going to win. The Muskies need an extra point to win the, this yeah, ball yeah. game. Mr. Brookhart, or Mr. Oathworth still got work to do. This is not over. This is 0.8 seconds left. There is still oh, the work to do. Second and third effort right there to reach for the That's goal line. He was initially stopped. Never kept the feet. He always kept the feet moving. And with eight-tenths of a second left, it's all about this extra point by the senior kicker, Jackson Othmer. North has a timeout if they want it. And we have a flag thrown, and the oh, kick was blocked, what? and I think we had defensive offsides. Ooh. North tried to anticipate the snap and got across early. <laughs> 20 to 20 is your score. There's eight tenths of a second left. This is your ball game. All hangs in the balance on an extra point by Jackson Othmer. And I'll tell you, I don't know that there's a kid I'd rather have in this position right now than Jackson Othmer. Need a good snap. Snaps there, another flag, the kick is up, the kick is good. Oh, but did they blow the play dead? They did. It was, oh my goodness. I mean, you gotta let the play continue and give you the would, you would kicking think. team the option. You gotta give, you yeah, gotta I, let that play go out and give the kicking team the option. They blew it dead, so Othmer's going to have to do this again. Again, there's nobody I would rather have <laughs> in this position than Jackson Othmer. And if we have to do it again, I'll say it again. Well, he's definitely warmed up at this point. Need a good snap again. There it is. Perfect snap. Kick is up. It's blocked. The kick is blocked. They can pick up that ball. They can pick up the ball. There still hasn't been a whistle, has there? I don't think so. I feel like there hasn't been a whistle, and the ball is just laying there. I Are they? No. And now they no. finally pick it up. I, I think that was a live ball. I feel like that was a live ball, and they could have picked it up. So... So, and before we get to the overtime scenarios here, we've still got to kick it. There is eight tenths of a second left. Unbelievable. 
Those three points make a big difference right now. I, I tell you, there was no whistle blown on that, and those refs were just all standing there watching that ball. No one touched that ball. Hmm. Had any muskie picked that up and run that in, that would have been a uh -huh. two points. Yep. Or I guess one point. I'm not sure it was one point or two, but it would have been a win. Yep. That one will be fun to go back and watch and see. Oh, no, it won't be fun to go back and watch and see. Interesting. Well, it, it is if, if we win. <laughs> Fair enough. Because the ball was blocked backwards. When the ball is blocked backwards, it's a live ball. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, all the wind out of the sails, except for on the field where it blows the ball off the tee. Let's not lose sight of what an amazing drive that was by the Muskie offense to tie this game up. But so much to talk about, Chris. Jackson Othmer will kick this one uh, out of bounds, and North will have one, one play. play. You know, and I'm guessing they'll take a knee. I mean, we can talk about the fact that that ball was blocked. We can talk about the fact that there was a play that an offsides that they, they blew dead, and the kick was good, and then the ball was blocked, and it was a live ball. It was just sitting there. There was a reason no whistle was blown. That could have been the game right there. We can talk about did Derek Pena fumble the ball when he was down at the one-yard line? We can talk about that two-point conversion. Was that a forward pass or a lateral? There's been so many crazy plays just in this last five minutes of the game. But, you know, and this is something I, I talk about with my son often, is we can have those conversations. At the end of the day, you still got to get it done. And there's also plenty of plays throughout where the Muskies could have just put this across and not had to worry about it. And so – the hope here is that they find that, pull it together. If we, I would say, hopefully go into overtime here because nothing crazy happens. And, you know, you got four downs, 10 yards. Just kind of squib this one would be the yep. play, I think. But he kicks it high, and we'll have a chance to return it. And, and he's still on his feet. Got to make the tackle. Still on his feet. Somebody hit him. Got to make the tackle. Down to the 50, down to the 40. He's got to beat Jackson Othmer, and Jackson Othmer is going to – We have a flag down now. The game cannot end. And now we have more flags. And this is what we're – And now we got pushing. Now we now got – oh, oh, no, no that's this not is, good. This we have is, a ruckus. Oh North God. players are running out on the field right now. This, this, is, is, this, this is, is ugly. This is not at all what any of us find is acceptable any which way but loose. I understand emotions are high. I understand all that. Well, they're going to have to sort all this out. See what the initial flag was. There's going to be flags both ways for unsportsmanlike conduct. And, you know, we had done so well. I, I don't think we've gone a game without an unsportsmanlike. Now, if this first flag was on Muscatine, North will get a play one play, an untimed play to try to win this game. And we'll see if there's any ejections right now because they, they could really bad. have I, some ejections. You had players coming off the... And if you're ejected, you're out next week. So this is a lot of bookkeeping right now to be done. And still no official uh, signal on what the initial flag was. Well, I was talking about how crazy the last five minutes were, and then it just got heck of crazy even more. This is, uh, wow. You don't see the benches empty in high school sports too often, no. fortunately. No. 
but they, they just sort of did right there. A lot of late hits. And this is going to be a novel. And just for those listening, uh, if you're commenting on Facebook, YouTube, we absolutely love it. However, please keep it clean. Profanities will not be tolerated. It, you're just gone. So. There's a lot of, uh, yep, as you said, bookkeeping right now. Numbers are being written down. I think we might have a, an ejection or two coming up. It's already fixed. Caden Smith Productions, you are gone. Again, I don't know. It all comes down to what the first flag was at this point as to if we're just going to overtime or if North gets one more play. Everything else was after the play was done and offsetting, and the only question is, are there ejections coming? So while we wait, let's run down the overtime scenarios real quick. How does that work? Well, it's it's a lot like, well, it's a lot like how college used to be, except I believe you get the ball at the ten yard line, correct? Yep. And uh, you each get a set of downs to uh, score. And if it stays tied, then the team who went first last time goes second the next time, and so yeah. on and so forth until you have a winner. Yes. Dubuque Senior wins their first game tonight, by the way, over Cedar Rapids, Washington. That's the opponent next week. And I think we're about ready to announce what we got going on here on the field. <laughs> Coach Hawkins out there. Coach Height is walking towards the middle of the field right now, wanting to know what's going on. We all kind of want to know what's going on right now. And, uh, and Now, here's the one thing. I will say this. I don't mind them taking their time, out, time on this one. Because that was a hot mess. I, I wish we had a micro. Remember when we had a microphone on the official <laughs> a couple weeks ago? Yeah. This would be a good time for it. I should have brought one of my shotgun mics. Maybe we could just, like, spy down on him. And well, we're about to be ready to have some kind of signal here. So we train the camera on the, the man in the white hat. Now they're going to go over and explain it to Coach Height. Well, in case you didn't know already, today is Friday the 13th. All day long. Yeah, for another two hours. And hopefully we're not here for two <laughs> hours. <laughs> so Coach Hike kind of pleading his case right now. I, You know, and here's the tough thing. Like, I don't even know how you begin to sort that out. It all comes down to that first flag, it, really. You know, is there going to be another, is there going to be an untimed down right now? Because North could attempt a field goal to win this game or run a play to win this game right now. The ball is 
is pretty far into musky territory. That was a heck of a return. And, and now you know why a lot of teams just squib kick in that yes. situation. Yep. Jason Solstice, wake up, wake up. There's still plenty of football to go. Coach Height still pleading his case, the Davenport North head coach. I, you know, and to it, a point, is, this has got to just, we got to play football here. This has really you, screeched this game to a halt, quite literally. You know, and are they like arguing to keep kids from getting ejected to have them next week? Uh, so many layers, so many layers. And. And we're bringing, are we bringing captains out? That would mean that it would be overtime. So so that is the end well, of, so we have no official call on any of those flags. We're just going to overtime? overtime? That, uh, I'm going to check next door real quick. I, yeah, you check with the, the officials because we, we did not see any signal made from the officials. The, the initial flag must have been on Davenport North, a block in the back or a hold which would make the game regulation over. But as for all the extracurriculars, there were there were some late pushes and some pretty, I don't want to say punches. I don't know if I saw a punch, but arms were extended and definitely flags were thrown on players. And, and players left the bench area. Now in basketball, that's, you know, an automatic ejection. In football. So here's what I found next door from yes. the – so they have no idea either. They have no – the refs did not signal anything to them. They've not been told anything. So we we literally – they've cleared the clock, um, <laughs> but we have no idea what flags were called. We have no idea if there were ejections. We have no idea of anything. Well, we didn't see any players leave the bench area like they were ejected. So – I can't. I have to say, nobody was thrown out of the game, and the initial flag must have been on North, and everything else is just offsetting. And now we're going to overtime. Right, but you still have to clarify that, right? Like you throw a flag, you have to. Here's the coin flip. Right. Sammy Motley, great observation that Lincoln is off his scooter and on just the walking cast. And there. Oh, MPW Channel 3, we will be right back. We just went over the allotted time. So not sure. Again, the officials not doing a very go good job of communicating anything. Not sure who won the coin flip. Um, who knows? Sawyer Zek is pointing in that direction. So, okay, North wins. They defer, which means the Muskies will take the ball First, he just yeah. signaled their kicking, which we don't do in overtime. So, does we'll any just we'll just wait and see what happens. Does anybody Chris? have any idea what's going on here? Can can somebody? It looks like we're going to be playing down on the uh, the end of the field. We don't want to play on right now because of our camera angles, but we'll do course. the best we can. <sighs> well, again, but they're dry. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just coming back with us on MPW Cable Channel 3, PCTV, uh, I'm not quite sure where we lost you. It hit that 10 o'clock mark. We've gone to overtime. We had absolutely no explanation from the refs as to what happened following the melee. Uh, we're just apparently just kind of wiping the slate clean and hoping for the best. So overtime, it will be the Muskies ball first. Four downs, no clock in overtime. No, uh, we're ready to get football underway after a very long delay. The give is to Brookhart. Brookhart 
Gets uh, about four yards on that first down carry. Now you can kick a field goal if you want, but then you lose if North scores a touchdown. Correct. Won't have to decide on that until uh, we the get thing. the fourth down. But uh, Well, and here's the thing. We know based on their kicking game, the chances of them wanting to kick a field goal are pretty slim. Wishbone formation. Curtis turns, gives it off to Brookhart. Brookhart inside the five. And down to, looks like maybe the two-yard line. Third down upcoming. Well, everyone's heart beating a little faster <laughs> right now. Again, got to win to keep those playoff hopes alive. Third down and goal from the two. Wishbone look. The turn to give to Brookhart. Brookhart is going to be stopped short, and now you face a decision, and I, I think you got to go. I, yeah, I think you have to. <sighs> because, again, North doesn't kick field goals, so they're not going to kick a field goal to beat you probably. They're going to score a touchdown, so you got to go for it here. Fourth down. The ball marked back at the three. They've tried Brookhart a few times. Now, do they put the ball in the air? Perhaps try Cooper Yao. Haven't gone to him yet. You do have a timeout if you want to use it. And now we have a stoppage, and Coach Hawkins does call timeout at the last possible second, and... Well, they'll talk about this play, and we'll talk about it as well. Fourth down, right now you got to go to your, your best play. Whatever you got right now that you have the highest faith in is the play you're calling. And somebody's got to step up and be the hero. It's that simple. Yep, I need a hero. The old Bonnie Tyler song. He's got to be strong. He's got to be fast. He's got to be oh. fresh from the fight. He's got to be. He's got to be. He's got to be. That's the Footloose soundtrack. Hmm. Figured you wouldn't have that one by heart. No, I'm not that old. Well, <laughs> close. Really, really close. All right, YouTube Facebook land, what play are you running? Thompson splits off towards the top. They come out in a wishbone. You have to score right here. The turn, the give, Cooper, Yao, Yao into the end zone. Touchdown, that Muskies. <laughs> Senior Cooper, Yao. Put six on the board. That is not looking good there points are on the board player is down in the end zone is that cooper i believe it is change your glasses take a look <laughs> ouch ouch i've ouch. been wanting to backhand you all season <laughs> uh So the six points are on the board as Yao is up on his own feet, which yep. is good to see. You go out. You can go for one or two if you want. It makes no sense to go for two right now. You kick the extra point yep. and go up seven. And lean on the defense. And then have the defense make a stand. You did the hard part right now. This extra point is huge. And uh, are they going for it? I think they're going for two here, Chris. I, I, that would <laughs> They're definitely going for two. That's what the lineup looks like. The turn, the give, trying to get the corner. Ducks inside, reaches. They give it to him. 
I don't know about that, folks, I, but they gave it to take, him. Take another look here, folks. The I, arms I are up. The oh two my, points are I, counted. Jeez, I don't know. And the Muskies may have caught a break there. Again, it's that Our, bad uh, angle for us, unfortunately. Like, I, but the two points are on the board. So, at worst, we'll go to double overtime. They can't lose an OT. You make the stop here. North needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to keep this game alive. Boy, that, that is just another play. There are so many plays tonight that will be talked about. I have a for feeling, a long, long time. I have a real feeling there's going to be a lot of views on this and a lot of replay. So now it's all on the defense. Can they make a stand, come up like they did against Central, and win this ball game, keep their playoff hopes alive into uh, next week's finale in Dubuque? North sends four receivers out, three to the short side. They pitch it far side, Bogan. Bogan stretching it out to the 10 and is brought down. A loss on the play. They tried their speedster to the far side of the field. Muscatine was there to answer. And now we have another musky slow to get up. As... The training staff will come out and, and take a look. Can't quite tell who that is. Quick update, Southeast Polk did win 37-34 over to Elwin. That's a, it's a huge game right there. So Southeast Polk will be your top seed, most likely going into the playoffs. And uh, that would be where the Muskies would go if they finish 16th. Just saying. They used to change it a little bit for geography, but last year it was pure numbers. One played 16 no matter what. Now I'm interested to see something of, say, Sioux City East finishes 14th and Bettendorf finishes third. Do they make Sioux City East drive all the way to Bettendorf? I don't know. I mean, you could fly. You wouldn't have to drive. <laughs> Maybe Amtrak. So second down and goal from the 11 as they're ready to run a play, but the player's not off the field yet, and the official really needs to kind of take control here. And now one of them does step up. Oh, man. Man comes in motion. Looking to throw. Rabarczyk's going to run up the middle. Rabarczyk's to the 10, to the 5. He's hit hard. He's still on his feet and brought down to the 5-yard line. Third down and goal. And did he get the ball? They said they had the ball for a minute, but no. No, it didn't come out. No. The Muskies thought they had uh, a fumble there for a second. The ball was whistled dead, and they mark it to the 4-yard line. Again, a, a nice spot for North. This four-down territory right here, the Wildcats have two plays to keep this game alive. Sammy, I haven't seen anything from you lately. Are you okay out there? Trips to the top of your screen. Bogan behind Rabarczyk in the pistol. Rabarczyk takes it, hands off Bogan. Bogan, it's a reverse play, and there's a lot of room to run. At the goal line, he somersaults into the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Where are all of these plays? Where was all this offense? Uh, completely fooled our cameraman. <laughs> I'll be honest. Oh, boy. Well, again, a gutsy call by Coach Height pays off, and now I think we're going to have a timeout as the game all comes down to this two-point conversion. If the Wildcats score, we go to a double overtime. If the Muskies can make a stop on this one play, they win the game. Uh, 
So they just went kind of deep in their trick plays right there, running that reverse again. What do they have here on the two-point conversion? Derek Pena is their power runner. Do they bring him in or is it Bogan again? Looks like Bogan is coming out. He'll be your running back. I almost feel like they're going to pass the ball here. They do have trips to the top of your screen. This is the ball game right here. The Muskies stop the Muskies win. Rabarczyk, empty backfield. Man goes in motion. It's Bogan. The ball is dropped. The ball is dropped. Rabarczyk's down, and the Muskies win. That is it. The Muskies win it. Rabarczyk oh fumbled the ball, was brought down at the five, and the Muskies somehow pull this game out of the oh fire and live to fight another day. I don't even know what to say. I... Well, you know what? We, Let's not do we this next week. We deserve this game tonight, though. Our viewers deserve this. Uh, we have had some dogs to broadcast the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And and your heart might not be all right. My heart might not be all right. I'll take it. But, hey, the Muskies are all right. Their heart is just fine. They have a chance to make the playoffs next week with a win. Just an amazing ball game. A, a lot of calls <laughs> that could have gone either way. A lot of interesting calls on the field and really going both ways. Both these fan bases are going to be talking yeah, about this game this, for at least a year. I, I have a feeling that somebody out there is going to be sending this off to Des Moines somewhere. It'd be like, hey, guys, you want to watch this game once or twice? Um, but, you know, again, nine times out of ten, the refs don't make the difference. I don't know that they made a difference tonight. They definitely made it interesting and complex and complicated. Um, but they, they they didn't do a good job of communicating. No, I mean they need to go see a therapist. They need to yeah. work on that. They they need to take some control of their situation. They need to, you know, be assertive and and control what they got going. The on. refs and fans might be getting divorced after this one, but uh, it's a W, and that's all that matters. And, boy, I tell you what, I we want to talk player of the game. I, I don't know if you can narrow this down to just one guy tonight. I got, okay, you know what? I'm the guy for the unconventional, right? We've given it – I've given it to the defense. I've given it to a guy on the injured list tonight. I just feel I've, like giving it to everybody. I Well, I, I'm <laughs> going to give it to the seniors. Yeah? Because, I mean, across the board, Brookhart, Othmer, yeah, like I like that. Brookhart made that, that play to score that touchdown at the end of regulation to tie the game, and there was so much effort on that. Cooper Yao getting the touchdown here on the other end in overtime. The the fake punt early on by Jackson Othmer, the interception by Jackson Othmer. You're, you're right. The Dayton Truesdale. Dayton Truesdale through. came in and made some big runs there. Darnell, you know, geez. That kid's been everywhere all season. Um, you know, this is a senior class that it, it's all kind of come together for them. Um, I don't, uh, Evan Frankie, Angel Mark, like these guys knew that tonight, A, they knew tonight was make or break, but they found a way, and that's amazing. This This was a fun one, no doubt. This... <laughs> This I don't know if a fun is. Who uh, it's fun when you win, my friend. I you know what? I'll be honest. I'd still rather go the Michigan way and win like fifty-seven to ten and move on with life. But well, perhaps next week. Next week we're on the road, up in Dubuque, beautiful Dalzell Stadium, in the Key City against the uh, the one in eight. Dubuque Senior Rams, who did win tonight against Cedar Rapids, Washington. That's not. Entirely a surprise. Washington's had a tough year, except they did beat Jefferson, and that's a head-scratcher. But that's a rivalry game, so we'll just leave it at that. So mm -hmm. you got a, a senior team that's going to be feeling a little better about themselves next week, and you're going to have an easy mission. You win, and you're likely going to the playoffs. I'll go home. I'll crunch those numbers, but I think that's the scenario right now. 
you know, you, you look at the teams ahead of them that lost. Roosevelt lost tonight. Uh, Waterloo West or lost well, last night. Waterloo West lost tonight. Um, Dubuque Hempstead lost tonight. I didn't get a final on Valley. Did you get a final on the Ankeny Valley game? Uh, no, but I can take a quick peek. Let's, let's take a quick peek because that's another big one that uh, we want to mention before we go off the air. Um, if Ankeny could get that win, that would really help out the uh, the Muskies' playoff hopes. So let's see if they've officially put anything in yet. Uh, oop, nope, that's volleyball. 3 nothing's not going to do us any good. <laughs> nope, that is not. That's not going to do us any good. We'll, uh, Check this out as well. And it looks like Valley beat Ankeny tonight, 24-23. to 23. How do you? 2-5 so, Valley, 5-2 and two Ankeny. So, yeah, Valley oh. is going to probably make the playoffs because they have an easy win next week waiting, I think, in Marshalltown. And they were ahead of Muscatine. But there are other options out there for teams to pass. I think uh, the Muskies will probably be about 20 going into next week. You got to win. You got to pass four teams. A lot of those teams are playing each other. We'll sort all that out once, uh, once we can, and uh, throw it up on Twitter for you, and, and for sure talk about it. But uh, boy, what a great win tonight! And uh, this, this was just exhale time. Yeah, glad you all joined us. It was a blast. Thank you, everyone, for joining us from all over the country, literally tonight. It's always a blast when we get the messages the next day and, you know, where you're from, all these things, and being able to watch your muskies. You know, we had some Class of 74 folks on. I mean, it's it's definitely a community team. There is no question. And uh, I, I'll tell you this, I, I couldn't be more thrilled that I get to be a part of the team that does this for you. And, uh, yeah, I excited one to bring you tonight. This was, this was a fun one to bring you, and glad you all uh, stuck around and, and tuned in tonight. Tell your friends we'll be back on the air next Friday night. Uh, basically just call it another playoff game because that's really what it is for Muscatine at this point. But uh, that is going to do it for us tonight on Senior Night. Again, the final score, Muscatine 28, Davenport North 26 for uh, Chris Anderson and uh, all the hardworking uh, folks behind the scenes. I'm Roland Glenbine uh, saying uh, good night, everyone. We'll see you next week. This has been a production of the Discover Muscatine Sports Network.